right, you ready to do this thing? Yes. All right, I'm going to start. Hello, and welcome to episode 192 of <laughs> 6. <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely <laughs> a podcast. It was so sudden. I almost, I think I might have to actually make that part of the intro. Yeah, no, just leave it all in. Just leave it all in. Continue. uh, I'm going to stop right there and explain. Normally, I tell Al, I'm going to start in 10 seconds. 5 seconds, seconds, 10 seconds, 15 15 seconds. And usually what I'm doing, which maybe he doesn't know, is I'm picking a part part on on the clock that I'm looking at of our recording. That is very easy for me to cut at, like just a you know a roundup, say like <laughs> say forty seconds into the whatever minute it's at, so that I could just do it. Uh, and I was about to say I'm gonna start <laughs> in and realize that it was at ten minutes and fifty eight seconds, <laughs> and I just now now is what I'm gonna start. You transitioned. Uh, you ejected on that sentence, <laughs> telling me that you're going to start it in, and then just began the intro. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. I want to be your host, Anthony Costanza, with me for everyone always. The man, the myth, the sleuth, Alessandro Bielsi. I'm pretty sure I've called you a sleuth before, but here we are. Say hello, Al. Book. Book? <laughs> are you saying book? That's what, that was me the whole movie. <laughs> well, I that was I forgot about that from the first movie too. Like I recognized him, and I was yep. like, "What was that guy's name?" I was like, "Is it Book?" I was like, "Oh no, it's Book." Okay, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole time I was thinking, especially because he yelled "Book," yep. I was thinking of Hocus Pocus when she goes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! On this week's episode, we've got Bob Odenkirk's next project, the Morbius reactions, and the Flash is definitely coming out. Uh, are you sure? All before diving into our flick of the week, Death uh, of Death on the Nile. Death of the Nile? I, the entire the river just died. The, 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 the Nile is dead. It's over. Uh, but first, and, Al. Was, wasn't that kind of the plot of the mummy? Right? Didn't like yeah. the didn't the Nile turn to to blood? <laughs> I think so. Right? Wait, is it blood or did, yeah, it was blood, right? Yeah. Or did it disappear? All the no, no. Well, well, I don't think it disappeared. I think. Because there was a the whole thing they had like the prophecies, like during, it was the first one mm, when, when they were them and the yeah. explorers all put down their like animus towards each other and they're like, let's all have a drink together and they go to take the drink and they all spit it out and like and all the the rivers will yes. turn to blood or whatever. Yep, yep. Uh, quick aside while we're talking about the mummy, which I I think happens regularly, right? At least once an episode we bring up the mummy because. Here, <laughs> we are fans of The Mummy. Not the Mummy an is episode. a top ten movie for the two of us, whether or not it's in our top ten. <laughs> it's, it's not, we don't talk about it every episode, but we have talked about it many, many times, which is what makes it hilarious when I failed on that one on, yeah, that's true. <laughs> on Funny that's, Games. That's true. I, it's such a like movie that like I'll remember very specific quotes from, too, and, and you as well. Uh, the, the stupidest just, quotes ever. Like, just, Betty, someone's on the wrong it, side of the river. 12 years old! <laughs> I was, but, uh, I was, I was thinking that Benny, someone's on the wrong I'm side of the, the river. river. <laughs> it's the stupidest quote to remember. Oh, that's great. I, uh, the only, I want to stay on the mummy for a minute, uh, because I did watch, and you know, more on this later, but I did watch the first episode of Moon Knight. And at one point he has a golden scarab in his pocket. And I'm yeah. like, that thing, drop that. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to eat your brain. It's trouble. It's going to, it's going to, it, it's going to slide all up under your skin. <laughs> Literally get under your skin and curl around up in there. Ugh. Ugh. You know, for terrible CG, that really gets me every time and makes me want to puke. What's great about it is the transition to someone stabbing it and yanking it out of the skin. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. The Mummy's such a great movie. I agree. Now, what are we drinking? Well, currently you're, I you're am... You're drinking a C4. <laughs> I am currently sucking down a C4 that usually... So this is the way it works, is I usually get home on recording nights, mm. eat dinner, shower, watch, like, just the way it's been going. There was, like, a couple of weeks gap where it was, like, an episode of Ted Lasso, but for a while sure. it was Book of Boba Fett. Now it's been Moon Knight. Yeah. Yes, and usually I have time to watch the episode. Sometimes I watch it while I'm eating dinner, and then yeah. I have, like, say, an hour-ish to play a video game. Mm-hmm. And when... I text you and like, hey, what time? You're like, oh, 15 or 20 minutes. I crack open a C4, start drinking it. I'm done with the C4 for easily five minutes before we start recording. And then 
we get on, we chat, blah, blah, blah. Everything was thrown off. I got home late. I, it took me longer to like get settled and everything tonight than normal. Eight while watching on my phone, <laughs> Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Showered, got out of the shower, got cleaned up everything around here, finished what I was drinking with dinner, texted you. It is like 8.40 already at this point. Like, hey, what time are we starting? Starting at 9. <laughs> are we starting at 9? Because it's almost 9. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. And then I grabbed my C4, sat down, and got distracted, like, finishing up my notes and stuff like that. Never opened the C4. Anthony goes, okay, I'm here. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and so I cracked the C4 open as I turned on the Skype. So I am finishing my C4. But when I'm done finishing the C4. The Skype. Yes. Did I stutter? I just like that. That's like the Netflix. You put that on the line. <laughs> you did. <laughs> so we're drinking another of, I figured this one's kind of perfect because the hockey season's almost over. So this is a The Grand Canyon Brewing Company handcrafted Kachina throwback ale? Kachina? Kachina? Basinger? Yeah. Bathinger? I think it's Kachina. It's probably Kachina. Um, Maybe it's Kakina. I suppose it's possible. I'm going to... I'm going to turn around to the side here. It's got a little blurb. Grand Canyon Brewing has partnered with the Arizona Coyotes to bring you Kachina Throwback Ale, an American that, ale. Surely that means coyote in some language, right? Uh, let's let's wait and, fi- let's wait oh, and find out. All right. <laughs> an American ale with a mild, fruity presence. Save your comments. Approachable. <laughs> <laughs> approachable hop profile and a touch of wheat for a refreshingly clean beer. An ode to the classic look sported by the Arizona Coyotes when the team first came to town is now back and better than ever. For every case sold, a portion of the proceeds are donated back to the Arizona Coyotes Foundation. Join cool. our pack. Um, cool. So, no insight into what Kachina is or means, or how it's pronounced. Um, so we've already done one Grand Canyon beer. We've got a couple more we'll be doing at some point. Yeah, or other, and um, I figure with hockey season almost over, this is the perfect time to break this one out. Even though the Coyotes are going to miss the playoffs as always. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry to any Arizona Coyote fans who may be listening to this. There can't be many of you. There's only about five of you to begin with. So, wow. wow. They have had. I feel. Shame. I. I feel bad. I always root for expansion teams working, especially when they are in non-conventional places. And that that team has had so many issues over the years. Um, specifically with getting stable ownership and stable like arena and everything like that. They've moved around multiple times. The late, the latest thing they've done is to move into, I think it's a college arena, which okay. has like 8,000 seats, which is like a third of a good sized <laughs> hockey arena, which it feels like that's just staving off the inevitable of them having a serious situation, which is a shame because they were going, they went through a sale several years ago. I thought that that might finally bring some stability to them with new owners. And as someone who is a fan of the Islanders who went through their own multiple decade saga with shitty ownership and shitty like home ice. I, I do relate except we just, we have more fans. What was their, their place called? Who the Islanders? Yeah. They were in the Nassau Coliseum for many years. Nassau Coliseum. They just opened up this season the UBS Arena in Belmont. Um, so I was, I really wanted to go to a game there this year for the opening and just didn't work out. Couldn't um, get it together. Couldn't get it together. Well, because I was trying to go with my dad and my cousin, and we just couldn't get our schedule synced up. Sure. And um, next season, next season sure. we go. So, um, as far as can art goes, this one's got it all. It's got a lot. So that is, I think they brought back that logo, or maybe it's a retro Kachina. logo. I don't trust Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> or Google whatever the fuck. Um, it just tries its best phonetically. It, that may be how it's pronounced, but I don't trust it to know the nuance of what this is referencing. Kachina. <laughs> It Sorry, sounds. It that sounds was like me switching it from American pronunciation to British pronunciation, which I'm fairly certain was actually Italian pronunciation. It sounded like it stalled halfway through trying to say Katrina. <laughs> it did. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's got the Coyote logo on it. Uh, it's got some skaters down below. Up on top is the moon. got that moon. It's got that moon. Got that moon from Moon Knight. 
Um, up on the top, that trim is tr- what the trim on the jerseys is. Oh, it's cool. A fun little design. Um, it's got a little picture of some desert and some cactuses. Side note, we can get to this more in consumption, but I ate cactus the other day. Oh. Yeah. All right. More on that later. Cool. Um, it's got some axes. It does have axes. With mountains and footprints and fire and fish. And it's fish. <laughs> It's, it's money and it's freedom and it's fish. <laughs> I actually do not recall that. Home reference. alone. Home alone. Marvin Harry in the fish truck. I believe it's the second. Yeah, in the, the second, second one. one. <laughs> you smell that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Now, now that rings a bell. Also, I think we we referenced this the last time we did this, but it's got the cool dog tag veteran owned. Yep. logo on this as well so um it sounds like you're a fan of the can art as well as i am so i am yeah i also i like that half that half mask that the goalies got there or the hockey players got there well otherwise you wouldn't know it's a coyote you know the sure. certainly the ears and the snout it would would not have uh, alerted you well disguised <laughs> it's, it's like wearing groucho marx glasses <laughs> oh man well let's give this one a taste shall we sure cheers Ooh, we synced that up perfectly. That was pretty good. Funny thing is, I always wonder, you know, are we going to hear it perfectly synced up on our end, but when it comes out in the recording, it's just wildly off? Who knows? That is made with bits of real Kachina. <laughs> That's <laughs> made with bits of real Kachina? <laughs> I, Al, what am I drinking right now? I know you told me what it is, but uh, is this I, a sour? What's I, going on here? I definitely, I definitely noticed a mild fruity presence. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you could definitely say that this hop profile is approachable. I didn't really detect the hops. Um, and it's it's probably refreshingly clear. I mean, it looks clear. But there's a touch of wheat. What is a throwback ale, though? Is that an actual thing? Because it, I, I legit tastes like a sour to me. Well, I think it was just the... The throwback because it's the throwback jersey. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, is it, is it supposed to taste this way? <laughs> um, I, I'm assuming so. This is Man. the only time I've ever had the beer. So. I like it. I like it. It's so, just, uh, I was unexpected. I'm going to be like, from the description, from what I was looking at and smelling. Wait, do you want to learn something? I do. Because we, we've been held up on this. So, a, wait, hang on a second. Is it going to play it? Oh no. Fuck. Not playing through the right thing. I have no this does not look like any pronunciation guide I've ever seen in my life, and I was hoping it was gonna play and it didn't play. Uh it looks like Katsina. K- oh. It's like a catsup situation. Oh no. A Kachina. Oh, it's a doll. Katsina is a spirit being in the religious beliefs of the Pueblo peoples. Native American culture is located in the southwestern part of the United States. In Pueblo cultures, K- Katsina rites are practiced by the Hopi, Zuni, Hopi Tewa, and certain Karasan tribes, tribes as well as its most as in most Pueblo tribes in New Mexico. The concept has three different aspects: the supernatural being, the Katsina dancers, and Katsina dolls, small dolls carved in the likeness of the Katsina that are given only to those who are or will be responsible for the respectful care and well-being of the doll, such as a mother, wife, or sister. Interesting. That's pretty cool. I'm looking at a picture of these things. They're pretty awesome. Are spirits or or personifications of things in the real world. These spirits are believed to visit the Hopi villages during the first half of the year. The local pantheon of Katsinas varies from Pueblo community to community. It can represent anything in the natural world or cosmos, from a revered ancestor to an element, a location, a quality, a natural phenomenon or concept. So what you're telling me is Kachina is Everything and anything. Well, I think it's... And nothing. I think it's... They're basically an avatar for whatever idea is important or thing. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Sorry. Don't click around on these images because some of them are terrifying. Yeah, I saw... Some of them are awesome. I saw a thumbnail of some of them. And um, then others are are alarming at best. Some of them are pretty cool and detailed. One of them looks like one of the things from Wallace and Gromit. A lot of these look like characters in a Zelda video game. I can see that. I think you're thinking specifically like a Majora's Mask situation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can, yeah. Definitely. Oh, this one looks like the Marshmallow Man <laughs> or a rooster. I I don't know how this is happening. This is either a Marshmallow Man or a rooster. 
those those feel like those aren't too. Those yeah, those I things. I would agree with you, but I am looking at it and I can't decide. <laughs> anyway, that was that's interesting. This beer, though, I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like a slightly fruity wheat ale. You don't is, you I'm, don't taste sour at all. Um, I mean the barest hint of it. Really, mine to me. To be it's, strong. No, it's kind of just, the, uh, there's a lot of these, like, Saisons can almost, like, dip into the sour territory. Some of them can actually be quite sour, but, like, mm. even the like the average one can dip into the, the sour territory. It, it's basically that sort of thing. It's basically like a farmhouse type of sour-ish ale. It's sour yeah. adjacent? Yeah. A- adjacent? Adjacent. <laughs> Sean Connery's <laughs> sour adjacent. Just playing both sides. <laughs> What are you giving this one? Um, I'll give this two thuckles. I think I'm with you. I like it. I just I'm just confused by it. It's really where I'm at. But nice, good pick, Al. I like I like all of these weird weird ass beers you give me. <laughs> I mean, you try and have some variety, some different. Hell yeah, things. you don't want to drink the same thing. I mean, this show on its own, I think maybe if we continue at this clip. I wonder if I'll ever reach the number of different beers that Jay and or Michael Warren have had. Because the, how how many have they logged in on Untapped Friends of the Show? So many. <laughs> Are they in the thousands at this point? I don't know because I never transferred over. Oh my goodness! My Untapped to the new phone. So I just like that. Like what I can say with confidence is how many different kinds of beer have you had? How many episodes have we done? <laughs> That's we've we've done definitely. nearly we've done nearly two hundred episodes, and I've had probably double that in my life. I, I would total? assume so. I would assume so. But nice. Let's get into some news and nuggets. Sure. Have you said this? Is some there's limited things to discuss here. First, what's going on with Bob Odenkirk's next project? Because I didn't know about this. Well, I I just saw it announced today. So Excellent. with. Better Call Saul kicking off next week, which good luck trying to figure out when that is in response to when this episode comes out. Uh, <laughs> the series is actually over. <laughs> per- pursue it to me and Anthony's conversation before the, the uh, recording was rolling. <laughs> um, uh. This was on the AV Club from today. AMC can't quit Bob Odenkirk, comma, sets new series with Better Call Saul star. As much as it pains us to say, better call... This is all preamble, never mind. Um, <laughs> Did you hate that? Yes, but with Saul heading to the great Cinnabon in the sky, where will... I'm sorry. <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a reference to the future Gene. Yeah. Right, isn't it Gene? Yeah. I forget what his last name is. It's definitely Gene, though. Um, definitely Gene. Uh, where will our doctor recommended serving of where will we get our doctor recommended serving of Odenkirk? Thankfully, the AMC Brain Trust has more interest in public health than other institutions. Wow! Earlier today, the network announced Straight Man, a new series starring Bob Odenkirk, is in the works and could arrive as soon as next year. He plays William Henry Devereux Jr., which sounds like of the he preacher character that he plays in Bob in Better Call Saul. <laughs> <laughs> A the chairman of the English department of an underfunded Rust Belt Pennsylvania college. Sounds like Odenkirk's got a lot of scheming to do. Aaron Zellman from of Silicon Valley and Paul Lieberstein, also known as Toby from The Office, will adapt Richard Russo's novel of the same name with the likes of executive producer and Academy Award winner Peter Farrelly, parenthetically still weird writing that, on board to direct. Uh, Bob Odenkirk promises that the show will be be a little lighter than recent projects. Quote, I loved Paul and Aaron's take on Richard's excellent entertaining novel. Uh, Once again, a project with AMC with a focus on character depth and sensitivity. Odenkirk said in a statement that feels like that was horribly copied and pasted. (laughs) Quote, this milieu. Sometimes you read something and it seems like it's actively rooting against you. (laughs) I, I think I've said that exactly multiple times while doing this on the show. Quote, this milieu, parenthetically, academia, seems very pertinent to the conversations we're all having. I'm drawn to the tone of humanity and humor in the novel, and I look forward to playing this role. Something lighter than my recent projects, but still closely observed and smart. It's cool. set to premiere sometime in 2023. All right. I mean, if it's got Odenkirk, I'll watch it. 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, AMC is going to look for its next uh, hits coming up soon. I know I've been seeing some trailers recently for new shows coming out soon. One of them, I'm pretty sure, stars Andrew Andrew Garfield. Have you seen this? Oh, really? No. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Since we are pretty light on news and notes, we might as well see if I can find this. But I I saw... I apologize if any of them get through. No, well, you got the first one off mic, so um, we're good so far. All right. Yeah, Under the Banner of Heaven. Oh, it looks like it's a mini series. Um, I and caught... Rice's interview with the vampire ordered straight to series. Really, eight episodes. Uh, uh, there another one. And Rice's Mayfair witches ordered straight to series. <laughs> anyway, Under the Banner of Heaven. <laughs> a devout detective's faith is tested as he investigates a brutal murder seemingly connected to an esteemed Utah family's spiral into. LDS fundamentalism and their distrust in the government. That's no, starring okay. Andrew Garfield, Rohan Mead, Rowan. I don't know. Um, oh, that 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 name sounds familiar. Who who is that? I don't know. That name didn't sound familiar to me, other than like that it's a name of a land in Middle Earth. Sure, maybe that's it. He was in The Handmaid's Tale. Do you watch that? No, I do not. Okay. Have Have you ever seen that? I've heard um, good things. No, I've heard it's too depressing. Oh, I mean, it goes for a lot of TV, I feel like. Sure, I've just heard that this is like, the balance is off a bit. Oh, okay. Right. Um, I've heard it's a good show, but I've heard some people who loved it in early seasons, like, after a certain point, were just like, okay, this is, the the enjoyment and appreciation to depression ratio is out of whack. Gotcha. Daisy Edgar Jones, why does that name sound familiar? She also looks familiar. <laughs> this is us just learning about new shows together. All Oops. right. Cool. Well, uh, just just because it's just back to back two new, yeah, like AMC shows specifically that I've seen about because I, I saw like I caught the last like five seconds of the trailer for this the other day on TV and I was like, is that Andrew Garfield? And then it like went to the title card, is like under the banner of heaven. And I was like, okay, I should probably look up and see if that was Andrew Garfield, and then I just didn't get around to doing that. Hmm. But I remembered it when I was just mentioning this new Bob Odenkirk show. So I feel like uh, these things will come out around the same time as part six of the final season of the walking dead. Well, this show is <laughs> imminent. It looks like it starts Thursday, April 28th. Oh, damn. Um, okay. That, real, that real being close. said, well, AMC usually doesn't tease out those things way too long ahead of time. Mm. Um, so, but, uh, yeah, the Odenkirk show doesn't come out till next year. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. AMC is probably looking for its next big thing and why not? Try out a new show with Bob Odenkirk because that's yeah. worked pretty well for them in the past, like multiple times. So sure, sure, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I mean, like I said, I'll watch. I'll watch what he's in. I enjoy his performances. So oh yeah, I think he's great. We'll give it a go. Uh, I have not. <laughs> I have not uh, dove deep into any of this stuff. I've only like seen headlines and the occasional meme. You want to learn about it together? But, We're talking about Ezra Miller, not Ezra Miller. No, no, I, I was I was actually yeah. talking about Morbius uh, <laughs> and it's and it's I thought, horrible reception. I was I'm sorry, I had the two things, you had the one, so I thought we were gonna go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny but, how that vague bit of information could have equally fit both of those two things. That's, true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the news of the week. But no no, but seriously, Morbius. I uh, just how how? Like I it, like I've heard nothing but terrible. Yeah, how, how did this happen? <laughs> oh, actually, wait, hang on a second. Oh, do, does anyone care about spoilers from Morbius? I don't think any of us do. No. Okay, I need to find this thing. We're gonna read through this together. There was something <laughs> I on the- you, it's, you phrased that, and you also kind of looked around as if there's other people here. <laughs> I was just selling it, selling it for it. effect. <laughs> I gotta see if I can find this thing here. There was something on the Ringer. I started reading it the other day, and I didn't get through all of it. We let's just enjoy it together. Okay. Because none of us is gonna watch Morbius. It sounds like it's god awful. Oh, I'm gonna watch it. Well, but my point is, you're not gonna pay money to watch it. We're gonna no. watch it when it comes out on HBO or whatever. Sure, not HBO, probably Disney Plus or Netflix or something. So this is on the Ringer from the other day. Forty-two questions about Morbius and its post-credit scenes. Oh no! Sub forty-two sub- <laughs> subtitled. Well, they're basically all in the form of just one sentence questions. Okay. So. Then they don't have answers. It's just questions. Uh, the subtitle thing was, uh, or subheading was, will Morbius go down as one of the worst Marvel adjacent movies ever? That's easy. Yes. But most of our Morbius <laughs> questions are harder to answer. 
So the preamble, after being delayed several times in many months from its original July 2020 release date, Morbius finally made it to theaters on April Fool's Day, which let's have a brief mm. aside here. <laughs> Me and Anthony were talking about this the other day when it came out, and I said after, because I sent something about these terrible reviews to Anthony, and I said, could you imagine if someone had the stones to intentionally release a terrible cut of a movie on April Fool's? Because I would respect the fuck out of that. Seriously. It would also create, it, I mean, people would not stop talking about it if that was revealed that that was the case. It'd be great for publicity. That's what I'm saying. It would be a yeah. tremendous like ad campaign. That, like the, the best way to get viral and actually increase ticket sales, especially in something that was like, people had questions about Mm -hmm. if you could do that. And then like a week later, guys, we're sorry. Or actually even it can literally be a day later doing a press release. Guys, it was a joke. This is the real (laughs) movie. And you know, there's people, Oh, you tricked us. I spent my hard hard money. It's like, yeah, okay, fine. Fair enough. But also that's balls. That's like literally performance art in the most meta way. I I would absolutely consider going again. If I I had gone, the only thing is I'd be afraid that someone did it as a, like the actual prank was, Saying it to get someone to buy the ticket the second time around, and it was still oh, the same cut of the man. movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a mind fuck we stumbled upon! Oh, that would be even better. I yeah, I, I, think, don't, I, I don't know which version of that I like better. I would respect the first version as uh, just art and being a really cool thing to do, and I would respect the second version from just business. <laughs> the uh, the ultimate hustle. The yeah. ultimate hustle. <laughs> so, um. Unfortunately, it sounds like this, twice. Yeah, it sounds like that wasn't the case, though. It sounds like this was just a really. It's bad just movie. bad, just bad movie. Got it. It was not in any way worth the wait. Oh, <laughs> Sony's latest Spider Verse film might well go down as one of the worst movies that Marvel has ever been associated with, and there have been some bad Marvel movies in the past few decades, from continuity errors and previously teased scenes that didn't make it to the final cut of the movie to straight up baffling storytelling choices. Morbius is an absolute mess that takes itself far too seriously for a superhero movie about a scientist who turns himself into a blood sucking vampire after splicing his DNA with that of vampire bats. Sure. Several days after seeing this 104 minute train wreck, my mind is still racing (laughs) with questions about what I witnessed. Even director Daniel Espinosa and Dr. Michael Morbius himself, Jared Leto probably couldn't explain much of what transpired on screen. Nonetheless, here are my 42 questions about Morbius (laughs) equally confounding post credit scenes. One, did Jared Harris know what Morbius was about when he signed up for it? (laughs) Two, so this is I said spoiler because like they're gonna reference characters in this that I haven't seen the movie so I don't know anything sure. about really. Where did Milo get all of his money? He's evidently loaded from the moment he first appears as a child at the beginning of the film. <laughs> Yet even after he starts fun- funding Doctor Morbius's quote unquote experimental research years later, there's never any explanation for where all his cash is coming from. Three, maybe I missed something, but why did Morbius turn down the Nobel Prize? Was it really because he hadn't found a cure for his rare blood disease yet, so he wasn't satisfied? Creating synthetic blood that would save millions of lives wasn't good enough for him? Four. When Mo- Morbius and Martine are getting ready to test Morbius's quote, cure, on a boat, whose idea was it to subtitle the boat's location as, quote, international waters? <laughs> After <laughs> Morbius says they need to travel to international waters. Couldn't we just say the location and leave it at that? <laughs> Five, hold on, is that Long Island in the distance? <laughs> Six, where did all, why did all these hired mercenaries bring guns onto the boat anyway? They were traveling with a pair of doctors who were conducting experiments, were they anticipating that one of them would turn into a hyper-violent vampire? Seven, according to National Geographic, a colony of 100 vampire bats can drink the blood of 25 cows in one year. Well, that's a lot of blood, but more importantly, that's a lot of cow blood. <laughs> No offense to the cattle of the world, but can we just get Morbius a few cows to feed on and call it a day? (laughs) Eight. Okay, I get the thirst for blood, the echolocation abilities, all the bat-related stuff. Morbius splices DNA with vampire bat DNA, so now he's got bat powers. But why is my guy so goddamn ripped now? And underneath that... Why is my guy... (laughs) There's a photo underneath that of a jacked Jared Leto, shirtless. Nine. When Morbius goes into his bat radar mode, why is everything so smoky all of a sudden? (laughs) (laughs) 10. 25 years after we see Jared Harris meet young Michael Morbius, the man hasn't aged a day. What's your skincare routine, Dr. Nicholas? (laughs) (laughs) 11. At least they had fun with it. Yeah, right? 11. Did anyone get Pokemon vibes from Morbius? 
because I, for one, did not, and I have no idea what director Daniel Espinosa is talking about when he says that it served as an inspiration for his film. <laughs> <laughs> There's a link to a story, which I also <laughs> want to read, but we don't have all night. 12. Amazing. Why didn't anyone question how Morbius, a world-renowned scientist who just turned down a Nobel Prize because he's that cool, was suddenly able to walk around without any crutches and also probably bench press a car? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I feel like I, I'm, I'm more interested in watching this movie at this point. 13. Between Martin in Morbus, Morbius and Selena Kyle in The Batman, what do these beautiful women keep seeing in these creepy Batmen? Hmm. I guess I can sort of see the mysterious appeal of emo Robert Pattinson. And Morbius did just have the biggest Marvel glow up since a scrawny Steve Rogers transformed into Captain America. But seriously, isn't this a red flag? And underneath that is a picture of a vampiric looking Jared Leto. <laughs> 14. When Morbius got his vampire injection, he needed help from a doctor to carefully find the point of entry on his spine before administering it. How did Milo manage to do that all by himself? I'm assuming that someone else is going to take the injection because classic. Isn't that just the isn't that just the route that these types of origins yes. take? 15. Wait, when did Tyrese get here? <laughs> 16. When indeed? When indeed? 16. Who told Tyrese he wasn't allowed to have any fun in this movie? I guess his partner, Al Madrigal, is having fun enough fun for the two of them, but this seems like a missed opportunity to me. 17. Speaking of Tyrese, did he really fall for a fake quote in which Martin Scorsese supposedly called Morbius the, quote, truest height of cinema? <laughs> Oh my goodness. 18. When Milo visits Morbius in jail, he convinces the security guards that he is Morbius' lawyer, and then he proceeds to leave both his cane and a pack of blood in Morbius' cell without anyone seeming to notice. Did Milo pay off the guards with his mysterious money, or are these just the worst jailers ever? Wait, a cane? and Yes. And a pack of blood, yes. Why the cane? I don't know. I didn't see the movie. <laughs> Can we guess why the cane? <laughs> um, oh, is it because he was apparently like crippled before he was able to turn? Oh, from is vampire? that what the whole thing is about? I'm gonna guess that's what it was. You because bats aren't crippled. No, but there was a reference right. earlier that he was on crutches. Right, but you um, used the bats to not be on crutches. Well, he used the bat blood. You never seen a bat on crutches. It's true, so I have not. That's so that's that's how you decide. Nineteen. I'm gonna be a bat now. <laughs> Problem solved. 19. Is there a version of Morbius where half of the movie is just Matt Smith feeding on humans and dancing over their bodies afterward? If so, I think I'd prefer that film to the one we got. Oh, dear. 20. After multiple victims were found dead with their blood drained from their bodies, the nickname given to the murderer, so, sorry, to the murder suspect by news outlets is the vampire killer? If Wait. J. Jonah Jameson is good for anything, the man knows how to come up with catchy nicknames. Did Jameson keep all the good headlines to himself in another Spider-Verse, or is this version of New York City just fed up with guys like Venom around? I'm confused. Didn't they just say the name for the victims? No, for the murder suspect. Oh, okay. 21. In the Morbius trailer, Tyrese's Simon Stroud has a bionic arm. See below. There is a picture of him with a bionic arm. Oh my god. But that detail is absent in the movie. Oh my god. <laughs> At one point, Stroud thanks Morbius for creating the synthetic blood that helped save his arm, so that might fill in some of the missing details of the story of Stroud's arm that probably got lost in one of Morbius's many cuts. But what's going on here? And there is a picture of him. Oh my goodness! Wearing... Yeah, I'm looking at the picture right now. Oh, do you have? Oh, sorry, do you have the the story open as I've been going? No, no, I'm just okay. I've been just searching for Morbius things. Okay. Along the way, I've been I've been searching character names that you're dropping. <laughs> okay, so you might know more about that than I do now. Um, 22. Is Morbius's patient Anna okay? After he is to after he has to put her into a medically induced <laughs> coma early in the movie, everyone seems to forget about her. Oh goodness. <laughs> Hopefully Morbius didn't turn her into a vampire. The alternative is just as bleak, since he never actually found a cure that didn't come with some pretty severe side effects. Oh my god. T 23. Was composer John Ekstrand listening to the Dark Knight trilogy score on repeat when he was working on the Morbius score? <laughs> I mean, respect. 24. At the end of the movie, why did Martine turn into a vampire when none of the other victims did? Spoiler alert. Hmm. Is it because she decided to bite Morbius's lip and drink his blood in their final goodbye before Morbius drank her blood too? Well, okay, hang on. In, in a movie that seems to try to pretend to be doing something with vampires and so far seems completely absent... Of all sort of vampire lore, 
that that was that's one interesting point of attention to detail if she drank his blood and then became one <laughs> yeah <laughs> um 25 so why Guillermo wants <laughs> why didn't morbius come back from martin's body after he killed milo spoiler alert hmm. like you're really just going to feed on your dead girlfriend's blood and then leave her corpse on a roof <laughs> <laughs> what, is he, what is happening? I guess Morbius really isn't a hero, huh? Oh my goodness. 26. What happened to Morbius's master plan of taking the anticoagulant for himself after killing my- Milo? Did he have second thoughts and decide he is up for tasty human blood consumption now? <laughs> 27. Let's talk about those two stingers. The first one reveals a mysterious purple rift in the sky forewarning the arrival of Adrian Toomes, Michael Keaton the main villain in Tom Holland's Spider-Man Homecoming. Wait, After- as the same character? Yes. That was his name? Yes. That's huh. definitely the Vulture's name, yes. Huh. After Toombs gets released from prison at the end of the scene, because his crimes were committed in another universe, the second Stinger finds him meeting Morbius and proposing a team-up. First question, why? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that bad man Superman skin. I need your help. Why? Why? <laughs> 28. I thought the whole point of Spider-Man No Way Home was to get villains back to their respective universes. So how did Adrian Toomes get sent to another universe? Hmm. 29. Why did Toomes appear in a universe where Venom and Morbius exist? Of all places. Okay, fine. I know the answer to this one. Money. But come on. Is the freaking multiverse really that small? Wait, Ven- Venom was there too? Uh I suppose so. Well, I think this technically the Sony owned properties are supposed to be a universe of their own. Okay. That's one of the, multi- that's the, the gist I was getting. Yes. Versus 30. Why is Morbius driving to a remote location to meet with tombs? If he can fly now, <laughs> has he not seen how high gas prices are? <laughs> uh, that's good. I like, I, so I always kind of like this bit of like a movie's either good or bad. Right. Or like, decent and if it's decent or good there's like all the little things that you just brush off because it's just a movie and they're telling a story but then if you are gonna go in like all in on tearing something apart to really just pull apart every detail is kind of fun yes uh 31 why is sony so enamored of the sinister six a Sinister Six movie starring Andrew Garfield was once slated for release in 2016 before it got scrapped, and then it seemed as if Sony was gearing up again for a Spidey supervillain team-up when Mac Gargan, the vil- villainous Scorpion, approached Tombs in prison in mm-hmm. a Spider-Man Homecoming post credit scene. Not to mention how No Way Home featured the Spider-Man facing off against five of their most infamous villains at once. Is a Sinister Six movie ever going to stick, and do we really even need one at this point? 32. Is Michael Keaton contractually required by Sony to appear in every <laughs> Sinister Stick <laughs> 6 teaser? <laughs> 33. Does Toombs realize that his version of Spider-Man isn't even in this universe? And if his family isn't around in this universe either, though maybe he hasn't noticed that yet either, there's a lot of eithers, then what does Toombs want? 34. What exactly does Morbius find intriguing about teaming up with Vulture? Like five minutes before the movie's finale, um, sorry, that's my bad. Like five minutes before the movie's final anticlimactic CGI bat fight, Morbius was prepared to die so that this transformative vampire serum he brought into the world would be gone for good. And now he's ready to team up, team up with full on villains. Sure. How did, Vulture right. get his, how did Vulture get his armor back? <laughs> it didn't come with tombs in the cell and there isn't another version of himself in this universe to borrow from either. Hell, the Avengers don't even exist in this universe, so the Battle of New York never happened, and there isn't any alien technology lying around to salvage. Where did Toombs get the materials to rebuild this thing? <laughs> 36. Are we sure that... that's that was... a, Hang on. That's a, that's a really smart criticism. <laughs> yes. Get, yeah. And an extrapolation of the point you were just making about, are we really going to tear apart every little detail? Because they've now spent multiple questions on just the teasers at the end yeah. of the movie. <laughs> yeah. And that's a, it, it's a really fair point. Like, we're just going full batshit crazy, yep. unintended. This is ridiculous. 36. Are we sure that was still Michael Keaton under all that CGI in the second stinger? <laughs> 37. Back God. to the point of picking things apart unnecessarily. How did Vulture get Morbius' cell number? <laughs> 38. It looks like the new Sony Spider-Verse Sinister Six will feature Vulture, Morbius, and potentially Venom. 
the upcoming Craven the Hunter, starring Aaron Teller Johnson. I'm sorry, what? Where was I when this was announced? I feel like I vaguely remember that. I remember there being some rumors whether or not Craven the Hunter was going to be in one of the upcoming Spider-Man movies. I don't remember there being... Did you just say Spider-Man? Sp- sp- <laughs> what? <laughs> I did say Spider-Man, which breaks... You know what? You're right to poke fun at me. Not because I called it Spider-Man, but because I called it Spider-Man in, in, in lieu of what I've always referred to as Spider's Man when we're talking about plural... Movies just to piss you and everyone else off. Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember them announcing a Craven the Hunter movie starring Aaron Taylor Johnson. That just doesn't sound familiar. To I, me. I I don't either. But also, how many how many characters? How many superheroes can you play? <laughs> yeah, he's just been all over the place, right? Yeah, um, that's pretty ridiculous. So uh, yeah, he will it will like that will likely introduce a fourth member in its titular villain. Who would the last two members of the villainous group be, and how does Madame Webb fit into everything? I don't know who that is. What? 39. My goodness. Is Sony going to do a Sinister Six, Sinister Six movie without Spider-Man? 40. Or does this mean that Garfield might return to get a shot at his canceled Sinister Six movie? 41. Huh. Why didn't Morbius question who Spider-Man is when Toomes mentioned him? A poster featuring, featuring what looked like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man appeared in the film's trailer. But that shot was nowhere to be seen in Morbius, parenthetically. As for Espinosa's explanation of the poster's omission, quote, if I... This is a quote inside of a parenthetical. If I knew something, I could tell you, but it's not mine. It's not my idea, you know? Uh, This sounds like one of those big studio meddling type of movies. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One edition of the Daily Bugle also mentions that Rhino is on the loose, which is likely in reference to Paul Giamatti's... Er unique take on the character in the amazing spider-man 2 so who exactly is the spider-man here (laughs) and 42 our final one i thought eddie brock and his venom symbiote slash lover wow moved to new york city (laughs) so where is the lethal protector still honeymooning or are they still getting drunk with Danny Rojas from Ted Lasso. Was Danny <laughs> Rojas in the second one? I don't know. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. Is I'll get around to it one of these years. That's amazing. Danny um, Rojas. <laughs> Football is life. <laughs> oh my gosh. So the last episode I watched was the funeral for Rebecca's mm. father. And Danny Rojas being unable to walk around yep. in dress shoes and then stealing her slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a final blurb here. Given that Morbius ends with the titular vampire doctor teaming up with the MCU's vulture, this likely won't be the last time we see Leto's anti-hero appear in Sony Spider-Verse. Considering Sony's strange roster of Marvel-related movies, which features Tom Hardy's Venom franchise and the yet-to-be-released Craven the Hunter and Madame Webb, the latter of which will star Dakota Johnson and Sidney Sweeney. What? What is happening? I why, don't know. This is what I'm why? saying. I don't I don't recall any of this news. Why is this a thing? Like, Sony's got to give it up. Sell it. Just sell it. You'll make more money, I think. Or just hand over all creative control to Marvel. Oh, and keep it? Yeah. Like, take, take the cash that they, that they generate for you? Correct. That's a, great. Yeah, do that. Either you know, one. what they're doing with the Spider-Man movies, which have That's been right. wildly successful and just good. stop this. Like, like, all of this is so half-assed. Yes. And how does Jared Leto keep getting attached to these things? <laughs> um, sorry, finishing that thought. It isn't clear where the studio is planning on taking this growing cinematic universe while oh Spider-Man God. remains in the MCU. Bef- before my brain implodes with Morbius thoughts or I slowly start to gain an urge to, chuck- to chug a pack of synthetic blood, I'll leave you all with one last question. Do we ever really need to see Dr. Morbius again? I, no, it sounds like no. It sounds like I do need to see it for the first time, though. I think what summed up best the thoughts on this movie collectively was the meme I sent you, which was the Darth Maul meme where he's Mm -hmm. igniting his lightsaber in the end fight of the Phantom Menace where it's Darth Maul standing there and over the Darth Maul character, it says (laughs) Jared Leto and he ignites the lightsaber horizontally and the first blade says the worst DC movie and then he ignites the second blade and it says the worst Marvel movie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, which I, I actually, I've, I've kind of forgotten at this point. That was Batman 
That was Batman v Superman? Which one was he in? No, Suicide Squad. First Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. That's right. That's right. That was a really bad movie. Yes. Oh my god, I forgot It was just so boring. I just also remembered during all of this that there was a Venom 2. Because it, like... (laughs) I mean, the pandemic certainly hastened this, but it was basically direct-to-video, is how it... Which which was? The second Venom. Oh, yeah. It feels like... It, like, it, like that was the way it was treated, which yeah. just shows you how much of a steaming pile of shit. Do you remember that? Was. Oh man, direct to video was such a ah, uh, it was just like this horrible mark on your movie. <laughs> yeah, it's it goes up alongside things like the Scorpion King two and Return of Jafar. <laughs> Return of Jafar, and, <laughs> but it's different when you're talking about like spinoffs of animated kids movies, like as opposed to are uh, we talking about the spinoff of an no, animated kids movie? <laughs> No, much worse. We're talking about a massively budgeted yeah. superhero, like, IP property franchise that they've just horribly mismanaged in all ways. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is, that was, I mean, that was funny, but also, like, really horrible. Yeah. Well, I figured we'll, let's laugh through the pain. Yeah. I am beyond fascinated, though, and want to watch it because of this. Oh, this one feels like it might have train wreck appeal. Yeah, I, I actually think, um, without seeing it, it feels like a contender for Bad Movie Night. Yes. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Like, the Suicide Squad, I'll never watch it again, because it was so boring. I just, it bored the shit out of me. It wasn't just that it was bad, which it was. It was so god-awfully boring and slow and long. This I sounds like, uh, Why? I think it was still at the time where I was buying almost every movie that Existed, I've yeah. like seen oh, or okay. liked t- even a little bit. But you've bought a bunch of movies that aren't good, like or like, oh, like yeah. the, that you don't even like though. Like you didn't like that movie. No, no, I didn't. Was, <laughs> I remember. Just, I, like I can get through it. It wasn't like there's movies that I've turned off. Um, I went many years without that being the case. And then I've, I can't even, I can't actually pinpoint one right now. I'm pretty sure I've it's, told you this before. It's, like, it's pretty rare for me, too. If I'm going to, like, it's different if I'm going to sit down and just watch it, like, on TV. Like, oh, this movie's starting in five minutes. I've always been vaguely curious. Yeah. Like, that might be a candidate. But, like, I'm not going to walk out of a theater. I'm not going to rent no. a movie and turn it off. Like, I'm just going to get through it. Like. Huh. There's movies I should have turned off. Yeah. Power yeah, of that's the probably true. <laughs> Phantom Thread. Honestly, of all of those. The one that still bothers me the most is Roma. Roma. Roma is my yeah. favorite thread. Yeah, I think it is. It, I honestly, I'm, I don't know where I'm at right now. I, th- I really hate Power of the Dog. It, it's, it's getting, it's, it's up there. Yeah. No, if I had, to, if I had to choose one of those three movies to watch, I don't know how I am able to. I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually get this out without throwing up. I think I would rewatch Phantom Thread. Oh, that would oh. definitely be that would definitely be my choice. Oh. <laughs> I actually didn't wholly totally hate it the way you I know. Did. I didn't like it, but like it was a delight. I, I didn't. To- it was a delight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't totally object to it either, though. Like at least I could see there was some things worthy of consideration in it. Um, wow! Now that I'm thinking about it, as much as I hated it, I might actually watch Power of the Dog over Roma. You might be right. Roma. It's Roma. It's Roma. That Yikes. movie was so boring. Yikes. That was, yeah. And then just ended, yeah. and like, it was boring and depressing, and it, if you recall, listeners, if you haven't listened to this episode, it got to the point where in this horribly depressing movie where this poor girl went through such terrible things, I actively rooted for her to die at the end of the movie. Mm. You know, that movie opens up with her mopping a floor, right? For 45 minutes, yeah. For 45 minutes. But that... The dirty, tattered mop, <laughs> wet, and hitting the floor. Like, it's like being touched with that mop for two and a half hours. That's what watching that movie felt like. You remember just, how long it's during- just, quick, quick, just like it just hitting you over and over. It's horrible. Oh. Do, do you remember how long during the credit sequence the water was swirling down the drain? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I think I actually have some trauma built up from that movie. Yeah, you've repressed it because we still, like, we joke about the Phantom Thread. Yeah. And we're eventually going to joke about the power of the dog. We don't even talk about Roma. No. It was, it's the worst. It's the worst of them. 
God damn. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> Ugh, I don't even know where we're at anymore. Morbius is probably good. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Is, there's at least a chance where this might be a movie that you could rewatch to laugh at. Like this that's, sounds that's like fair. a movie that isn't a good bad movie, but is a movie that's so bad that your experience is good because you're just mm. laughing at it. Like how? Like what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're, I feel like we're gonna have to check this one out for ourselves. But uh, what was the other thing that we were gonna talk about? Oh, the, the Flash. <laughs> the Flash is definitely coming out. So here's here's I I only caught like a couple of headlines in relation to this. I clicked into one, started reading, and I was like, I'm not interested. But what it came down to is like Ezra Miller arrested, Warner Brothers holds emergency meeting. To yeah, de- what the hell is that about? To determine fate of properties that they're attached to. I- I'm, open- I'm opening the story. I it's was like, like but, but before, you, before you even get into it, I don't even care what the story says because I've already I already know what this is. They were like, "Oh, he oh, they got arrested? Let's use this to pull the plug on this project that has been an absolute disaster for easily a thousand years." Well, you can see you can see the spin cycle already cuz this so this is on the Rolling Stone. Top line, Ezra Miller arrests prompts emergency warner brothers meeting about star's future sorry this is what prompted the emergency I, warner? I just, yeah that that's one that's one and the other thing too is like what how does that happen how does an emergency warner brothers meeting get? is there like a comical siren that's like but it's like a hand crank siren well it's warner brothers <laughs> it's warner brothers so i assume they just have a batman signal that's just the wb <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive, <laughs> an insider says Miller had, quote, frequent meltdowns during production last year on The Flash, described the actor as, quote, losing it. This is some big spin cycle energy. Will Smith isn't the only Hollywood star facing career backlash in the wake of a public <laughs> outburst. That's a sentence. <laughs> it's got punctuation and everything. Uh, on March 30th, <laughs> Warner Brothers and DC executives <laughs> held an emergency <laughs> impromptu meeting to discuss Ezra Miller's future with the studio following the Flash star's recent arrest for disorderly conduct and harassment. According to a knowledgeable source, the consensus in the room was to hit pause on any future projects involving Miller, including possible appearances in the DC extended universe. The studio has more than a year before it has to make any hard decisions about a potential sequel to the Flash. It might have a year before it comes to just releasing that movie. But that's just my own parenthetical there. Well, doesn't it? I mean, it, doesn't it already have a date of 2023? Uh, probably. Who knows? Who cares? Yeah. Okay. Warner Brothers also has avoided making any key decisions on tent poles ahead of Discovery taking control of Warner Media in a $43 billion mega merger. Is that how that's going on? I assumed it was the other way around. Wait, what's happening? Discovery and Warner have been in the process of merger, merging. I just assumed Warner was taking over Discovery, not sure. the other way around. Oh, it's the other way? It's surprising to me. Interesting. Warner Media Chief Ann Sarnoff announced on Tuesday that she is exiting the company as AT&T spins off its entertainment division to Discovery. Last month, Warner Brothers moved the Andres Machete-helmed first installment, The Flash, a production fraught with drama, from November 4th, 2022 to June 23rd, 2023. There you go, Anthony. <laughs> also. Am I misremembering? Is was that director? Was he the one who did the It movies? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm misremembering, or yes, that's him. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's him. It's him. <laughs> one insider you says know, Mil- the Flash horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> one insider says it's Miller actually had- a documentary about the making of the Flash. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> one insider says Miller had quote frequent meltdowns during production last year on the Flash. While the insider stresses there was no yelling or violent outbursts. Isn't that what a meltdown is? I, I, I'm kind of curious about that myself. I'm thinking maybe more of like a sitting in the corner rocking situation. Okay, that's possible. They describe Miller as, quote, losing it. Quote, Ezra would get a thought in their head and say, I don't know what I'm doing. According to the March 28th police report, Miller became agitated after patrons at a Hawaii bar began singing karaoke. <laughs> doesn't seem likely, but Okay. <laughs> Miller shouted obscenities and grabbed the microphone from a 23-year-old woman as she was singing and allegedly lunged at a 32-year-old man playing darts. Hmm. 
the 29 year old movie. Oh, what's all these ages? The 29. Why? Yeah, why are we throwing so many ages uh, around? I, I don't, I don't know. The if they're all, if they're all relatively the same age, can we just omit the whole thing? And it like, <laughs> I don't really get what we're going for. Also, this is like 14 different people. Like you could just say he lunged at a woman who was singing and a man who was playing darts. Like I don't. <laughs> it does make it sound like there's so many more people there. Yeah. <laughs> The 29-year-old movie star was arrested and charged on both counts and was released on $500 bail. The bail was $500 and we're making a big deal about this? <laughs> like, if it was $5,000, that's o- why, okay. That's why I'm telling you they're using this because they know it's all in trouble and they're oh, going to yeah. pretend that it's because of... I said, this yeah. is all this is all spit. Yeah. The incident took place at Margarita Village in Hilo, Hawaii, the day before... Miller's Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore castmates were celebrating that film's world premiere in London. Even more troubling, a local couple fired, fired, filed a temporary... Wait, wait, wait. They were in Hawaii the day before the celebration? No, he was. But but isn't that as far away as you can get (laughs) from where you need to be the next day? (laughs) Maybe he wasn't invited because of his, quote, frequent meltdowns or whatever. I don't know. Um... Even more troubling, a local couple filed a temporary restraining order against Miller on March 29th, which was the day after his arrest, I guess. The couple claimed that after Miller's arrest, Miller burst into their bedroom and threatened them, with Miller saying to the man, I will bury you (laughs) and your slut wife, Oh, according to the report. Oh my. The petition also alleges that Miller stole the woman's passport and the man's wallet, which included a social security card, driver's license, and bank cards. A judge granted a what temporary is this story? I don't know. A judge granted a temporary restraining order the following day. The judge is expected to make a decision on whether or not to extend the restraining order by the end of the month. The Hawaii incidents are the latest in a series of troubling events involving Miller. In April 2020, footage of the actor apparently choking a woman at an Iceland bar circulated on social media. The Justice League star was kicked out of... Why do I do this to myself? I, I can't speak Icelandic. Uh, it's a bar in Iceland. Sure. Right? But no arrests were made. Miller has never commented on the incident. Sources say the Iceland footage gave Warner Brothers pause at the time. But Miller, Miller was not kicked off Seekers of Dumbledore like castmate Johnny Depp, who lost his libel case against the British tabloid, which had referred to the actor as a, quote, wife beater. They know how to pick him in Warner, I guess. I guess so. I guess in, so. In January, Miller posted a since-deleted video on Instagram threatening a North Carolina chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. Well, I mean, I got his back on that one. Okay. Um, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what... <laughs> Erroneous. Why did, Erroneous why? on both accounts. I'm, I'm more interested in why you stole the passport. What's your game plan here? Is it is it just is it just to create chaos for the person you're taking it from? Ah. I would have to assume yes, right? That is you Max can't chaos, do anything right? with it. That's to, to go fully into the Warner situation. That's full-on Joker stuff right there. Uh, right? Uh, yeah, taking the social security card along, with, along with the passport so that you can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fixed. You are gone now. You've been erased. Not stealing Cole his Schwarzenegger. I- not stealing his identity, just the things that confirm it. That's right. <laughs> that's a- oh, that's twisted. That's somehow darker than stealing somebody's identity. That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. it's Joker stuff. Some people just want to mm. see the world burn. Mm. Um, the actor told members of the chapter of the Ku Klux Klan to kill themselves with their own guns. Otherwise, quote, we'll do it for you if that's what you want. Oh. Okay. Fair okay. Enough. Um... Miller shot Fantastic Beasts, Beasts and The Flash back-to-back for the studio in London in fall 2020 and spring 2021, respectively. Seems ungrateful of Warner to, after all, of putting him through that sort of hell to, uh, mm. you know. Given the positive buzz on early footage of The Flash, the film was expected to catapult Miller into a rarefied group of actors who can carry a major box office hit. But the Hawaii incidents are expected to give to cause PR headaches for the star and Warner Brothers. In the temporary restraining order petition, the couple noted that Miller, quote, is famous and wealthy. This makes access to weapons much easier, as well as sending associates what to arrest. What is this story? This is, is there the, something this, bigger that they're not reporting on? This also, is a, why this does this piece. read like the ramblings of you know when you <laughs> you know when you're watching a news story and they interview the person on the scene? Like the person that's like on the street there that yes. has no business being on camera. That's mm-hmm. what this whole story sounds like. Yeah. It sounds completely made up. <laughs> this feels like a headpiece. Yeah, definitely. I mean, listen, maybe it's true. I don't know, but it, it feels like a headpiece. Mm. So Miller, Miller is known to have a fascination with weapons. That's what this whole thing about the weapons is. Here we uh, go. Okay. During a 2018 cover 
interview with the Hollywood Reporter, Miller offered to show this reporter the crossbow from the film We Need to Talk About Kevin, in which the team actor portrayed a high school killer. Quote, you want to see the real bow and arrow from Kevin, man? Because I got it right back there. I really do, said the, at the actor's Vermont farm. Who is this person? Why does he have a farm in Vermont? <laughs> People usually don't want to see it when I ask them. They usually say, no, I prefer not to see that bow and arrow. And I say, okay, it's up to you. Oh, my God. Okay. During, during the interview, it doesn't end there, Anthony. I'm sorry. Miller also defended <laughs> gun rights. Quote, People need to protect themselves, the actor said. In fact, Miller, who identifies as non-binary and uses they-them pronouns, I'm sorry, that's the first I'm aware of that. Said sorry, that, I was trying to jump in before and I didn't know how to correct. So you, <laughs> you said it earlier and I didn't. Uh, it didn't quite register for me, so I just wasn't aware. That, yeah. Said they don't have a problem with... Now I'm realizing they've been dancing around the pronouns in this article. But that's very, why, very that's awkwardly, why Miller has been used so often. Well, when, not as often as the movie star. And the movie star, yeah. Um, said they don't have a problem with people owning semi-automatic weapons. Quote, nope. Nope? This is a terribly written. Quote, nope? <laughs> yes. That passage initially appeared in a sidebar story <laughs> of the actor. Wait, which passage? Was pulled at the nope. best. <laughs> That passage initially appeared on a sidebar story on the actor, but was pulled at the behest of the actor's publicist following a mass shooting at a Pittsburgh synagogue. Oh my gosh, this is... Oh boy. <sighs> this is all over the place. There's, I think it's like it's safe to say with all of this, there's something bigger at play. This is literally a can of worms. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's literally... I'm picturing that now. <laughs> Ah, just why, why are there so many worms in there? Uh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I this is an absolute joke. This this whole news and nuggets section has been a train wreck. <laughs> it's this has been our own personal Morbius. <laughs> hey, look at this. Uh, though you were asking why Miller wasn't in London for the premiere, and it says here that a source says Miller was never expected to attend the Fantastic Beast premiere because their publicity plans for the film were limited given that they were saving contractual promotion commitments for The Flash. Oh, interesting. So they sent him, they sent them to Hawaii to be as far away from the London premiere as possible. That's <laughs> how I understand this. Also, just to continue back to the train wreck that is this article, you want to hear the final paragraph in the story? No. <laughs> it's, it's almost a total non sequitur, except in excellent writing form, goes back to the original paragraph. Oh, okay. And I had to reread this a couple times to realize what they were going for here, because gotcha. I had totally forgotten that this was mentioned in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. As for Smith. Wow. Now, they could have said as for Will Smith, which would no. have brought jogged my memory that we talked about him in one sentence at the beginning of the story. Right, the very beginning. No, nope, as for Smith, who also is a part of the DC extended universe as supervillain Deadshot, Warner Brothers and oh, DC man. had I want you to know that for for like a good two seconds there before you revealed what it was, I was racking my brain like what? <laughs> as for Smith, what? <laughs> Uh, Warner Brothers and DC had been developing a Smith-led, again, with this weird naming thing, yeah. developing a Smith-led standalone film for Deadshot, but had put it on the back burner long before his Oscars assault of Chris Rock. <laughs> okay. Smith, whose price tag was $20 million for Warner Brothers' King Richard, priced himself out well before his controversy. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, just stop doing what you're doing there well, was this article or there, no well that too there were that with the dc stuff in general it was like there was the nolan batman and then there was a whole bunch of things that happened and then there was the batman and that was the next time it was good sorry so just, i was muted for a second there uh -huh. did you do the batman thing intentionally yeah. to poke at me <laughs> for <did>. accidentally <laughs> calling it spider-man before <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad you got it though. <laughs> the Spider -Man I did. I just Batman. couldn't. I just couldn't respond in the moment. Uh, you left a pause for me, and I was like, "He did that on purpose," and he was waiting just, for me to respond. But I had muted myself. So they just like they've created the the DC 
Oh my goodness! I, That's I created a monster. Is that I where you're gonna go? And like, don't, don't, don't blame Ezra Miller. I'm sure it sounds like maybe there's some something going on there. There uh, does seem to be something, and going on. you know, whatever. That but, being said, we are really painting a broad picture of the yeah, situation. Like, I, I feel like they're trying to use this as what they're gonna. I, I was like dead serious, like from reading the headlines, it's like, oh, they're using this as like a way to end this existing DC universe without admitting that it's completely their fault. Well, just the nature of the way this was written and like considering the absolute hell that that development went through, which had nothing to do with Ezra Miller. Like you're, you're just looking for all sorts of ways to eject out of your up, like a a situation of your own making. And Mm -hmm. it feels totally spurious. Like even if these things are going on, it's nothing to do with the fact that that's been a train wreck situation for the past, like eight years. Yes. Real bad. Real bad stuff. <clears throat> like even if all this stuff is true, it has nothing to do with what's been going on. Yeah, I agree. But it's being used that way. That's terrible. Well, I guess we'll. I don't know. I am kind of curious to follow this a little bit more closely to see what other kind of garbage is thrown out. Uh, oh, you know, it's going to keep getting messier. Yeah. So, well, I I have a feeling that this is going to become a segment for the next few weeks. <laughs> we do follow up like on both crimes and stuff like that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's like the boat. <laughs> Ezra Miller was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, Al, what are you consuming? Um, okay, we got a couple of things here. Um, one, Halo. It sounds like we've both been consuming it mm. uh, after the many trials and tribulations of Plex. I was able to find one format in which it worked, which was my new Xbox Series X. Huzzah. At least it worked for one day in which I watched those first two episodes of the show. We'll see what happens going forward, but it worked cool. that day. And so I took advantage of it to the fullest that I could in the moment. The next episode of Halo comes out tomorrow, which means nothing to you when you've listened to this episode. That's right. That being said, the next well, by the time you're listening to this, it may be the fourth episode that you're thinking about. That sounds right. We're yeah. talking about the third one. <laughs> Second. Well, sorry, yeah, we're talking about the third one. Or not, yes. Um, so we both watched it, so yes. you want to talk some Halo? Yeah, I do. We, we'll do an interlude, Hanging with Halo? Hanging with Halo, on the ring, with Al Which, and Anthony. <laughs> actually, kind of perfect, right? Because Hanging High was one of yeah, the right. maps, right? Well, uh, maybe Hanging High with Halo? Hanging, yeah. I, I'll take it. Okay. I'll take it. Hanging High with Halo. Um, okay, first episode. Definitely was interested. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. I was... Uh, Death, I, I was like, whoa, when I realized how brutal we were going to go, like, <laughs> very quickly, I was like, yeah, they, they just went... exploded that girl. <laughs> Not only that, it took about, what, 12 minutes to go full Anakin Skywalker and kill a bunch of younglings, just yeah. exterminate them? Yeah, it was intense. I was like, okay, okay, setting the setting the stage for how this is going to go. I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? It's, it's in the <laughs> games, it's very heavy. It's very dark, like... The Covenant is trying to wipe you out. Like it, it makes sense. I just didn't. Absolutely. I no, I'm not objecting. I was just shocked. It yeah, I was that just, way. I was, yeah. It's one thing to say, oh, they dropped a bomb on a civilization. It's another to watch sure. an elite kick open a door and, and mow, mow down, down everyone, a yep. room full of children. Yeah, yes. that was that was pretty intense. I will say. So on top of that, I don't understand the thing that I found very jarring about the first episode is how it could transition. From looking really great to really terrible in a matter of seconds. Just over so and what, over again. What specifically did you find terrible? I'm curious because it's tough. I thought, it's tough to tell in that format because it only streams at 1080p on Plex, right? Yeah, yeah mostly. Probably for you, it's probably 720. But the elites look terrible. At times. They actually time, look the right sorry, in some they stuff. Look, they look terrible in in that setting of the battle. In that for in that camp, I think it was they, a light. They, I think it was a lighting issue. They all looked horrible. Um, in the cave, the individual one looked great. Yeah, and even like some of the scenes of them, like on like the the ship or where like the um the prophets were, mm-hmm. I think they looked fine. I think it was a lighting issue of they're shooting it in the desert, and it's tough to light yeah, well for CGI. I think maybe, that's what it was. Maybe that I mean, and that makes sense. But like, it's just it was it it was definitely jarring. Yeah. Um, because the other things in the scene looked really good. Yeah. Which made them look much worse. I yes. Think. Um, especially Inconsistency. considering fire and explosions, I feel like when you're not doing them practically, they don't usually look that good. And yeah. they looked pretty good for the most part. So I, when you put that I, next to the elites, that looked like hand-drawn <laughs> animations sometimes. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's weird. Or they, you know what they really look like? is like when you see like 
alpha builds of a game where like not all the textures are in play. That's what it looked like. It looks like when you hit the back button on Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary yeah. Edition, and yeah. you switch back to the original. That's what it looked like. Yeah, there was. It, it, I think inconsistency is the best way to talk about it because there's some stuff that looked great. Like a lot of the stuff on Reach looked really good. Mm. I thought. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. It's that's the thing. Like I said, it's it. That's what makes it weirder is that some of it does look so good. Spartans looked great. For the most part, yeah. Um, there, there's still some wonky stuff when they're... You know what I realize it is? Um, I've been noticing some stuff in the last couple of months, watching stuff on 4K more and more and more, is the specifics of, man, they've gotten so good at getting some like really good... Some faces look really good photorealistic with CGI. Yeah. Some you know, armor and textures of stuff and like looks great. But there are certain... And even like some movement mechanics are looking great. Like some physics mechanics look really great, but some of them are so obviously wrong still. Mm-hmm. And it's like across all mediums, like they just haven't. And what I noticed is shoulders. Shoulders are tough. Yeah. They can't make shoulders move convincingly. Mm-hmm. It looks like you can literally see the wireframe turning. It's like yeah. human shoulders don't move like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that was the first thing I noticed with the, the Spartans when like, and it's tough because they cut from one scene to the next where it's like, okay, that's a person wearing armor. That's CGI. Right. And even though I noticed it, it's like, okay, like it still looks good, but it's like, it's noticeable, but it looks good. And then it's like someone literally like while holding a rifle, like turned and ran. And I was like, oh God, his shoulders yeah. look so weird. Yeah. It actually looked like when you turn the character in the game. <laughs> like specifically like, like actual like Halo 1, 2 where... It's like if you're playing multiplayer and you watch someone else turn and you can literally see the axis yeah. of, the, of the person. Definitely. Turn. Definitely. I will say during that battle, there was a, aside from the motion, there were a couple things. They did a handful of first person view things where like they dove into the helmet. I was like, okay, but don't, don't make this a thing, please. I think doing it every once in a while is fine. It's cool because it's a little nostalgia trip. Like the HUD looks just like it does in the mm-hmm. game, which is, it's kind of cool. It's, I think to me, it's just a signal. Hey, listen, we paid attention. Yeah. I don't know. I, I could. I, I. It breaks a little. It breaks immersion for me uh, from watching the the show. I think it depends on how often you do it and why you're doing it. Yeah. And I think what the the amount they use it was fine. If they use it any more than they did, I would have been like, okay, this is a bit much. But yeah. I thought it was fine, especially especially since it specifically seemed to mostly be in the first episode. Mm-hmm. I think it was more. This is a pilot. We're letting you know that we paid attention. This is Halo. Remember when you played Halo? This is what the inside of a Spartan helmet looked like. Yeah. I I thought that was enough. So, going a little further on that first episode, I uh, I was curious how often Master Chief will be taking his helmet off, and we're doing it a lot. Which is was was your theory for why you would cast an actual known actor yes. to do the thing? I throughout the first episode, I was still I he though he didn't say much. I was like, I, it was it was killing me that it wasn't the Master Chief voice. Yeah, um, that was really that was really bothering me. And I was worried by the end of the first episode. I was like, ah, I was like, this is fine. And then I watched the second one and I was like, oh shit. I was well, almost off for almost the entire. Episode, <laughs> yeah, and, so. I, and I was like, but I was, I was very invested in where the story was going and what they were building out and how they were leading in to some of the darker aspects of the politics of the, of the storyline from the games and books and stuff. And I was like, oh, I was like, I, I think, I think this actually has potential to be, really good let's see if we can keep on this cadence I, I i was fully willing to give a pass for the first episode as you know i don't usually care for pilots and that's it's what it so was. tough to do a good pilot yeah so you know let it let it be and then the second episode far better in my opinion and really entertaining and in some ways uh, in some ways there was a handful of times where the story just came to a screeching halt in the second episode and considering oh, so. there was very little like action to like break it up. Like I thought the oh. pacing of the first episode was much better mm. than the second episode, even if like the second episode had much more con- compelling. Okay. Here's where we're going to start to, there's a plot thread. Here's a plot thread. Here's a plot thread. Here's some character. We're introducing some people. We're introducing some world building. Like I thought structurally, mm-hmm. there was a lot of interesting stuff to the second one, but I thought the pacing was so inconsistent. Mm. Um, whereas the first episode, I thought that they paced out, and give you a good taste of the action early on, even if it's pretty light on actually knowing what the hell's going on. 
Yeah. Like, I think there's very much a jumping into the deep end aspect of the first episode mm-hmm. and this pros and cons to that approach. And I definitely saw some of the cons in that, but at least I felt like it was engaging and propulsive throughout the first episode. The second one, as much as I liked a lot of the accounting that was done to, Hey, this is what we can look forward to us pursuing over the course of the next season. There's a handful of times where it was like, yeah, it just came to a screeching halt and I was almost like tempted to like pop on my phone because I was a little out of mm. the, the okay. action that was going on there. I guess, yeah. I'll be curious to see how the next one holds up for you. I, one thing that I'm really interested in is they are leaning into, uh, John getting memories back, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Cause do you know, do you know how the Spartans are made? No, I only played one, two, three and reach, uh, as far as story goes. Um, and I never read any of the books or anything. Gotcha. So, so I, it seems like they're they're leaning into this very specific bit where they're taken from their parents and they're replaced with a clone that is not going to live long. So that the pa- the child dies at home with the family and that they could be completely disconnected and they could be taken. Ask no questions and all that. Yep, because they have no idea that that's going on. So and they and like John is having memories of his childhood. Mm-hmm. Which have been wiped from his mind and dampened by whatever other stuff. Well, is in sealed it. away is what they yeah. phrase it as, right? Yeah. So that 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 part's cool, and like that breaking through is going to create a big trust issue for him and um, Doctor Halsey. Mm-hmm. And so that's that'll be cool to see how that plays out, and then also how the other Spartans uh, react when I assume the news. <laughs> and basically, what I'm assuming is that we're going to follow certain bits because it's. They are, it's very different from the games. Um, yeah. And, but certain bits seem to be at play where like the, the core Spartan group silver team in the, in the show, they're like, I think they've got each other's back no matter what, which is pretty consistent with like blue team as far as the games, games are concerned. So that's cool. And I hope that that plays out and they like really do stick together going forward. Uh, I am curious. Do you think? Do you think that we see the ring at like the very end of the first season? I would kind of think so. See, I'm still a little confused though. Maybe I've been missing it because I haven't really. It's it's been so long to get to this point of the show coming out that mm-hmm. I really haven't engaged with a lot of the marketing ramp up to the show. And my impression has been that they've been playing coy with whether or not this is canon fully. It can't be. See, that's what I was wondering as well. But there's still enough there that like. If you're gonna have all of the people involved, like why wouldn't it be? Because well, so far some of the things that they've done have made it that it can't be. Well, it's it's hinted that it might not be, but yeah. um, there, there's also enough have, to when, when they arrive when the Pillar of Autumn arrives on the ring in the first game, mm-hmm. they have no clue what they've stumbled upon. Well, they still don't in this. We'll no, but they they goes. know of a ring. As a weapon. That's what they've figured out so far. That's well, already see, that's already far too much information that they do not have. Well but like in this case though, it's 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 there's there's a suggestion that that's the case. Mm-hmm. There's but but also, there's no idea of that. But who knows what happens though by the time there's only a couple of people. It's it's John and it's Dr. Halsey. Right? What, what do you mean? Only a of people. of the UNSC, those are the only people who have that information based on the end of the second episode. E- and if we yeah. know Dr. Halsey dies during Reach, right? I think so. And John, we we it's already been heavily implied that she's going to try and wipe or repress his memories again. Okay. So if she dies and she seals his memories away, and Miranda's never involved with what he knows, mm. then you can still kind of sort of. It's not exactly a retcon. You're just kind of be, like potentially your into own little thing. Okay, yes. I, I, maybe. Okay, I'll see. Oh, I, I'm interested in seeing how that plays out. The other thing I'm curious about is what they're doing with Cortana. Well, technically, we haven't really seen her yet, right? Obviously, that what well, took me till the final scene to realize that that person inside of that pod was a clone of Doctor yeah. Halsey. Yeah. Just because I, I think it was literally just the angle in which they kept shooting her at, mm-hmm. and I didn't recognize that it was her just with a bald cap on. Yep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, I, what I think is going to happen is they're kind of going to just download her brain into. That's my. That's my Cortana. guess. That's started off like as an at. actual yeah. like, yeah, w- which that that could make sense. Um, so I am curious to see how that plays out too. Yeah, I, I'm. 
I'm interested. I'm ready to watch. I'm I'm excited for the next one. Yeah, no, me too. I I, I was pleasantly surprised with how it's gone so far. I was I, definitely intrigued. I liked the whole. Uh, they're showing like certain things about John that are like pretty consistent about like his luck and things like that, which is a big thing. And then, um, he the Spartan that he goes to meet up with and like he gives him his five minutes and the, I can't remember the guy's name. He the, the Spartan that he lets go. And then he goes to meet him in the second episode. Oh, yeah, the Bokeem Woodbine character, yeah. that I liked that whole storyline. I thought that was pretty cool. And, like, that character is, like, I... I, remove... I doubt that's the last we see of him. Oh, it's definitely not. Yeah, like, I, I've i gotten rid of, like, the sensory dampening stuff that's in me. Like, I can remember yeah. and I can see and I can feel again. And I think that's so cool because, like, that guy wanted that and he was getting it. And John doesn't is is starting to get that stuff because I'm assuming because the energy field is disrupting his implants and things like that. Um, well, that's what she said, right? right? So that that's kind of cool. So we'll see. I'm curious how that plays out. Um, didn't know didn't know that he wanted to know more until he got a taste. <laughs> to, yeah. So we'll see how it yeah. goes. But the uh, it's pretty cool. I do think if you're gonna take his helmet off, um. Because you're like I was, I'm. To, I'm actually like I'm kind of fine with like the helmet being off. I don't really care so much about him being concealed. I more cared about the voice because the voice is so iconic to me. But the move where he removes his helmet so that the person that he is standing face to face with could kill him if they needed to, like that, like that trust move was really cool. I yeah. thought that was a great scene. That was a nice moment, and uh, I felt like it set the set the the stage really well. I only have one other comment. It was my first impression of this show. I wondered whether all of the, what was the name of, was the UEG? Was that the name of the, the organization or something like that? That Maybe. that was rebelling against the UNSC. I don't remember the, the acronyms, but. Well, anyway, that group of people, the, the insurrectionists, mm -hmm. I was wondering whether they were all competing in this year's natural light challenge because every one of them had a mullet. <laughs> Oh, you jerk. Way to bring it. Way to bring it full circle on a previous episode. I love oh, it. I know how much I you loved it. that story. I, it was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. What else are you consuming, Al? Um, so, obviously, last week we talked about the Bruce Willis situation. Mm. Very sad that it was. And I thought it was nice that on a lazy Sunday, AMC decided to play all of the Die Hards back to back. Mm. And I watched most of Die Hard and a lot of half watched a lot of Die Hard 2, which technically I've still never really seen because I wasn't really paying a lot of attention to it. It was kind of on in the background, but you've never seen it the whole, like you've never actually sat down and watched it. The second one. No. Huh. Something to do with a plane in the airport. Yeah. It, it's Die Hard in an airport. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. But like, I still don't know what it's about. <laughs> it's... Uh, I, I don't know. Terrorists. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Does it, it doesn't really matter. I don't think. Well, I don't know. I mean, the first one's a really good movie. The third one's a really good movie. Like, the I, third one is a really good movie. Uh, and I still, I like the fourth one. It's fun. I don't know if it's good, but I like it. I don't really remember it. That was honestly that one. probably no. I must have seen the first I heard before I saw that one. But that was the. I, I had only I'd seen the third one before I saw the fourth one. That came out while I was in high school, and I definitely remember going to see it, and like it was a fun action movie. Mm. Justin Long and Timothy Oliphant. And oh, yeah. Kevin Smith's in that one. Kevin Smith's in that briefly, yes. That's right. That's right. Um, John McClane attempts to avert disaster as rogue military operatives seize control of Dulles International Airport in Washington, D.C. That's the plot. Do you know what the tagline is for Die Hard 2? Die Harder. I love that. <laughs> that makes me happy. Yes. I mean, they should have just called it that, right? I, I agree. It sounds like they kind of softly... Like they adopted did. the tagline as the name, kind of in the same way that like "Live Die Repeat" kind of yeah. sort of replaced it. <laughs> That's so stupid. That thing's so stupid. I hate yes. that. Yes. Uh. Anyway, cool. That that's fun though. That you got to that you guys watched a little bit of that. That was how his wife ends up. She's on the plane with that shitty reporter. Yes, that was my f first uh, thought too when I saw that. I was like, "Wait a minute! What are the chances that that fuckface is on?" He is the, the worst, play? and he does play a great fuckface because it was he the does. same guy from Ghostbusters. Yeah, except it took <laughs> me a second to recognize him because he didn't have a beard. Of the Von Fuckfaces. <laughs> 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 uh, 
but yeah, he's he does he he, pl- he plays the part. It's true, sir. This man has no dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's cool though. Are the, you consuming anything? I've done yeah, kind of one and a half of them. So yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, <laughs> I'm consuming American Idol, as you know. Yes, and I shared this. I'm you texted me about American Idol yesterday, or the I, I did. I'm sharing this with the audience now because I shared it with you the other day. But we were watching it, and uh, I think Lionel Richie says something along the lines of, oh, "I love that kid's voice. It's got spice," and. <laughs> Kim from downtown on the other side of the couch, just without skipping a beat in a really low, unsettling voice goes, Spice. (laughs) (laughs) And this has just become a thing. Anytime the word spice is thrown out anywhere, we're like, it doesn't even register to me first, but she pulls it out. (laughs) That's great. I love that. It's so good. I love her commitment every time. Every time. Uh, laugh out loud moment shared it with you knew you laughed out loud too when you received yes. the text and that's that's just gold anyway they're down to the top 24 and okay. a couple of people that i like are in it a couple of people that i'm like why though <laughs> but you're not good and oh. you're not gonna win <laughs> so let's just skip this part <laughs> it's harsh, yeah. harsh well, fair. you know what it's the honest truth uh what, what you got you want to go next what do you got sure um, so where'd my notes go? Let's go to a, a literal consumption. Mm. So Saturday night, parents asked me and my sister if we'd like to go out to dinner with them. I said, sure, why not? Got nothing going on. So I said, okay, let's go to this Mexican restaurant near us. We really like show up Saturday night. It's six 30. Yeah. Packed. 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 Okay. What kind of weight are we working with? Uh, at least half an hour. Okay. So I was like, okay, that's, probably not going to do. We could go anywhere. But now where to God, does this end with gorgonzola fries? No. All right. <laughs> no. Um you weren't paying attention earlier cuz you know where this is going to end. And so uh, no, I it's, I'm sure you were paying attention. You just probably don't remember. Um Probably not. I I I've been losing a lot of context. It's from okay. Minute to it's minute. okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's totally okay. Morbius? Did you guys have bat? <laughs> <laughs> Real live authentic bat. Cow blood? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all coming back to me. The whole episode's coming back. <laughs> yeah, except for the one thing. So anyway, <laughs> now we've got the craving for Mexican food. It's like craving? pizza's not pizza's not gonna work. Yeah, I was doing a, a bat blood sucking pun thing. Yeah, I said craving. <laughs> oh, I thought you said craving. <laughs> um, same thing. Whatever. Um, yeah, pizza Chinese food is not gonna do now. We need Mexican food. Okay. The other Mexican place we typically go to Taco Bell. No, we've been hearing <laughs> lately that things haven't been going so great there, that the quality of it, like, they got new ownership. We used to love the place, the previous owners. I've heard it's not been doing so great lately. Mm. Forgot that there's another place, like, two minutes away from where we are. Mm. N- me and my parents have never been there. My sister apparently had. She goes, oh, yeah, it's really good. Let's go. Okay. So we go. Sit down. Really cool vibe. Nice pl- Nice people. Packed, but it's big, so, like, we literally nice. were able to get a table in like five minutes. Cool. Th- Sit down. Chaney, like Chaney, though? No, no, okay. no, cool. no. I don't. I don't think so. At least I've never. If it is, I've never heard of it. Gotcha. Um, I think it was. I don't remember what it's called. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was called Chevy's Texman. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> so uh, you know, <laughs> drinks, n- some nachos while we're figuring out food. Sure. Looking around, I was like, okay. I typically go with like an enchilada type of thing. There's a couple of like meals where it's like, we'll give you like an enchilada and a burrito and yeah, a taco. Yeah, combos. Standard. Yeah. I saw they have one special. Mm. That looks interesting. And it's called Mocajete, which is, I think, literally Spanish for like mortar, mortar and pestle, specifically like those old school like Mexican mortar and pestle type of situations. Mm-hmm. Big like stone one. Yeah, I got one of those. Okay, yes. Um, so. As I'm looking at it, I'm like, huh, that seems like an interesting meal. I turn and look, and someone, like, two tables over from me is being served it. And I was like, yes, that is what I will be having. <laughs> and it's, like, everything. It's, they gave me a bunch of chicken, a bunch of steak, a bunch of chorizo sausage, literally fried cheese. Like, it was, like, mm. mozzarella sticks but without the breading. It was literally, like, they took a big 
like cylinder of cheese mm-hmm. and deep fried it, but without the breading. <laughs> yeah, it was like froze it, right? Maybe I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, all I know is it was delightful. It was just a gob cool. of fried cheese, rice, beans, other like you know a couple of jalapenos, like whole jalapenos that had been like broiled. Um, bunch of quesadillas. It's basically just make your own whatever the fuck you want out of all of these ingredients. But one of the things involved with it was Nepal, which I've never heard of before. And it's cactus. Oh, right. Cactus. <laughs> I was still trying to figure out what I the know. hell is he talking about? I was like, does this go? Is this Roma? What are we like? What was this? Is that what the dish was called? <laughs> no, I, I can see I the wheels turning. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the wheels turning in your brain before cactus. while I was going through this. Yes, okay. I ate cactus and it was actually pretty interesting. Was what does it, it taste like? Is it? It's kind of like. I would say the texture was similar how, how to How like, was it prepared first? Cuz I don't know what so, I'm like looking at right now. So it wasn't like the big like the arms looking like with Sabaro cactus or whatever. Sure. It wasn't those. It was it's like a form of like kind of like prickly pear type of thing sure. where it's That's like kind of what I anticipated. Like the like the p- big pad type of thing. Okay. So it's like it, it's sliced, so it's like a thin like slice, and they like cut it into strips. I want you to know that the bare necessities is playing in my head again. I know we were All talking right. about it a few weeks ago. Cool. I'm watching. I'm looking at how it's prepared right now. It's yeah. So yeah, it's green. It's like strips. Kind of reminiscent. If you were like looking quickly, is like it would, you would think maybe it was like strips of like green bell pepper or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, and the texture was kind of sort of similar to like zucchini, but it was sweeter than that. Okay. Was it, it was good. What it was wasn't it, like, bad. spiced with? Uh, I don't know. There, there was some sort of... So, in the middle of the thing, they basically ringed it around the bowl of, like, the thing. And in the middle was a bunch of, like, sautéed onions in, like, some sort of, like, sauce. Cool. And it was all kind of ringed around it, like, dipped it. into it. So, you could kind of, like, apply a yeah. little bit of it with what's going on. I want this. I'll have this. It was really good. Really good. You get that for me. There's a lot, though. I, I actually couldn't finish it. Now, when you pick a pawpaw... <laughs> or a prickly pear, <laughs> and you pick a raw paw. Next time, beware. I was just saying something with beware, but I couldn't remember how to get there. Awesome, cool. That sounds that sounds really good. What yeah, did everybody else get? Um, now I'm invested. I think my mom got enchiladas in green. China enchilada. <laughs> no. <laughs> she got it in, in Salsa Verde, and mm. my dad always gets some form of fajitas at a Mexican restaurant, and my sister got one of the combo ones. Nice. Like a good combo. Yeah. I think I'm going to be getting Mexican food. Yeah, you got the bug like now, right? It's, it was something. good. Really, yeah. really good meal. Yeah. Uh, I love Mexican food. I'll it's eat it all day. Every day. I'm watching. I'm consuming. I don't think... I don't have anything worthwhile to mention that I'm eating. Um that I'm physically consuming. Like, so, uh, with my eyes, I'm consuming the walking dead <laughs> still. And I'll be damned. Al, this season's kind of good. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it coming. I'm feeling a little blindsided aside from the mistakes, right? Like, which are, which are many, which are many. Sure. I uh, it's, it's intriguing. Like, I want to know. I want to know the mystery of what's going on with this place. I want to know what they're up to. I want to know how it's like all going to unfold. Mm-hmm. I am well, definitely well, no, like concerned. 37 parts from now? That's right. I'm, de- I'm definitely concerned that they've introduced far too many threads for the yeah, final season. That. So we'll see how yeah. that plays out. Um, they introduced another one, like, a couple episodes ago. And it's like, Come on. <laughs> and then they killed that thread. And I was like, okay. Nat- naturally. I was like, that works, I guess. <laughs> but it's... Uh, Wonder it, no more. <laughs> it's interesting, for sure. What, uh... Your turn. What you got? What do you consume? I think... What are you out? That's about it for the last several days. Because, like, Sunday afternoon, before watching the Die Hards, I was watching this week's movie. Um... Friday. I know uh, me and my family caught up on the season ended, but we fell off for several weeks on um, Promised Land, the uh, oh, yeah. Ortiz show. Mm-hmm. So we watched a couple episodes of that. Now that show uh, ended, right? Um, Like forever? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Um, it definitely was shifted from ABC to Hulu. Oh, okay. Last, last I heard, though, it's 
I mean, the season ended. Mm. And last I heard, it's up in the air whether it's going to get renewed for a second season. So, Gotcha. Cool. I, uh, I'm i also watching Outlander, which continues to be a tremendous show. I love okay. it so much. I, 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 I very much encourage you to watch it. I don't want to talk about anything on it because I feel like it's one of those ones I wouldn't want to risk spoiling anything about where we're at or what's coming. And it's just, it's really, I, I just, I love the idea. Like, I love the idea of people from the future living in the past and like doing their best to not disrupt history, but also trying to protect the people they love. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah. That's one of those ones that maybe eventually somewhere I'll get to it. Yeah. I think you'll enjoy it too. Yeah, I know my brother has liked the show. Um, so yeah, it's it's one I'd like to get to. I still have a lot of other things to get to. Yeah, I um, I'm considering I'm considering reading them because um, I we're on like the fifth or sixth season. There's each season is covering a book from my understanding, and okay, that's how a lot of there's shows nine going, right? out, and there's one more book coming. So it's gonna be a while before the show gets there. Okay. So, I, but I'm kind of like. I'm so invested at this point. Like I kind of want to start from the beginning and, and go through it all and, and see where, it, where, it, where it ends up. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, that would have required me to read. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do Al? I think that's for consumption, but do you have time for fun and games? Um, only if you can permit me like 30 seconds or so to plug in my computer because it's about to die. It's about to die. Why don't we do fun and games after the break? Okay. Fun and games, you're up to ask the questions. Yes. All right, good, because I have a movie prepared. That would have really thrown me for a loop if I had to start rattling questions off right now. <laughs> All right, I'm prepared to answer those questions. Okay. O R A T E. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong game. <laughs> well done. Um, yeah, this isn't Wordle. Um, did this movie come out in or after the year two thousand? Yes. Okay. In or after the year twenty ten? No. Okay. I like having a decade. I really like having a decade. It helps it. until it doesn't. Sure, but. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Except for that time. Well, it hasn't always worked out so well for you. Like when I no. took you back to the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, okay. Is this movie a comedy? Yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, are any of the stars from SNL? Like primarily, not like they guest hosted once. No. Okay, I'm like I'm like like ninety nine percent confident. I'm talking about like you know top line stars, not yeah, no. someone who showed up in the cast for five seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so that rules out Will Ferrell movies, which is obviously a lot of them. Is this a Apatow affiliated comedy? No. Okay, so that rules out a lot of other comedies too. Then it sure does. Hmm. It's going to make this tough. <laughs> you think it'd make it easier, but maybe it eliminated too many. It was too good of a question. <laughs> huh? Okay. Um, what? I can't remember if you asked five or six questions because I have my thumb out in an awkward position, which would lead me to believe that it was because I was counting a question, but I right. don't I remember I asked, moving on. I think I asked five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Five, two about five the years. Sense. Two about the years. SNL. Avatar. SNL. Apatow. Comedy. Comedy, yeah. All right, five. cool. Five questions. Okay. I always do that, too. <laughs> it's like, oh, Whose hand is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you doing with those digits? <laughs> Drinking whiskey? Yes. All right. I mean, I usually... I feel a little left out, but that's fine. I usually transition to having a bit of whiskey for the second half of the episode. I didn't so. realize that. Yeah, I mean... I don't, like, I... I wouldn't say I keep it off screen. I just, the glass is down here out of the camera lens, but you can always see it as I take a sip. Maybe, huh. I don't know. Maybe I've been doing a better job, like hold it, cover it with my hand. It wasn't yeah. intentional. Just the way I was sipping it. Did I just like rotate it more where you could see? Yeah, it I just happened glass? to notice. Yeah. Okay. It is a healthy pour. It is a healthy pour. It's probably too healthy. Unhealthy? 
An unhealthy pork? <laughs> I like healthy. It's two fingers. It's not that unhealthy. Yeah. The glass is kind of wide, but it's fine. <laughs> I mean, most whiskey glasses are. It's square. It's square shaped. <laughs> Whose fingers are measuring this? I mean, I have pretty big hands, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thick sausage fingers? I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, remember that sausage pizza? That sausage pizza was good. I'm about that life. <laughs> I've made it six times since. <laughs> That's all I eat exclusively. It's only been, it's only been 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, man, the disappointment when I went home and thought I had that, a slice uh, of sausage pizza and I opened it with Danish Kringle. Kringle, which was also really good. Sure. I ate all of that, too, but like I was <laughs> expecting it to be the sausage pizza. <laughs> I can confirm that opening up foil and finding those two slices of pizza was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, back to this movie that I'm just... I wouldn't say I was stalling, but I just didn't have another question to sure. ask at that moment. <laughs> so, is this like an action comedy? No. Oof. This is gonna be tough. <laughs> like, a lot. Pick whichever a lot you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation before we start recording. Oh, man. Allot you fourteen more questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. I heard that. Okay, this movie come out in or prior to two thousand five. Yes. Okay. I do feel like I need to continue to narrow this field because I have no fucking idea where I'm at, where I'm at with this. <sighs> Is Ben Stiller in this movie? No. Damn it! What are you doing to me? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm double checking for cameos, but no. I'm fairly no he's not. Okay, well I was thinking more, you know, like a one of the stars in the movie, but I guess it would have been disheartening if he had been a cameo in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. What is that, seven? That was eight. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Um is this Nah. I don't know if that's actually gonna be that helpful to ask. <laughs> Not that these other ones have been that helpful, but <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. is it? No, I, don't... I think I've probably already ruled out a lot of that too. Hmm. Oh, man, I don't know. Like the SNL stuff wipes out all the Farrell stuff, all the Sandler stuff. Yep. The Apatow thing wipes out basically all of the Rogan, Franco, <laughs> it wipes out the rest Rudd of the comedies stuff. <laughs> The, and then, I, like, the only other avenue, really, was the Stiller stuff, and that's not in there either. <laughs> um, did Jim Carrey in this? No. And he only had a couple in that period of time, either. Ooh, I forgot that in Consumption. I watched most of Liar Liar the other night. Ah, oh, great movie. It's been a while. So God I've seen damn, it a times. that is blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen it, but I have seen it many times. Anything else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have unpaid parking tickets. <laughs> I just love the sound he makes while he pops open yeah. the thing. Like spring out. Be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. Jose Canseco. <laughs> I love I love when he's freaking out. You scratched my car. That was already there. I watched you do it. <laughs> he goes, and he goes, I mean, I can do anything. I can take it as well as Clive's court, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just gonna, instead, I'm just going to piss and moan because nothing else can happen. Goes, You've been here before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, what, I love that, that scene in the elevator, too, where he's like, I love it here. Everybody's really nice. It's probably because you got big jugs. I mean, your boobs are huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just so childish, but for some reason, that delivery is just perfect. The roast, The roast scene. Is so yeah, so good. <laughs> I love uh, uh, my favorite part. Of, uh, honestly, is the punctuation of when he's just l- scream laughing in her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so over the top. Um. Okay. So no famous comedic actors are in this movie, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not produced by any of the famous comedic producers. So, I am stuck. It's funny, I was just thinking the other day, too. 
Man, I hope Anthony picks a comedy soon because I feel like I could really narrow that down. <laughs> Although it didn't work for my cousin Vinny, but mm. huh? Hmm. Who the fuck else? I mean, like, is the lead of this movie typically known for his or her comedy? Yeah. Okay. Well, because I mean, like, that might have helped with my cousin Vinny, right? Like, Joe Pesci isn't a famous comedic actor, really. He's more of a dramatic actor. Sure. I this one's. I want to say yes. I feel like yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it, like it, the person could have like Adam Sandler has done dramatic roles, but he's known for his comedy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's just that the I feel like that the brand of comedy is a little bit more on the subdued side, but it's it's still they're known for it. Okay. I feel like I feel like at least. Okay. Hmm. Like okay, just to clarify, <laughs> you know how like Matthew Perry from Friends Chandler, mm-hmm. he like. When you put him in a movie, you're get like to be in the comedic role. You're getting a certain type of performance out of him, and like a certain delivery and things like that. That's kind of what I mean. Like, yes, in that sense. Like, well, I, I guess my my point is, if the star of this movie were Matthew Perry, he's a comedic actor. Yeah, Friends is a comedy. That's what he's famous for. Okay, right? Yeah. Um. Then yes, I'm just gonna go with yes and move okay. on. Okay. That's ten. That's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just feeling like I feel like most of the questions I've I've asked have ruled out most of the major comedic forces from that time. I'm not saying it's ruled out all of them, but it's. And that's, I don't want you to get too hung up on over on on like Jim Carrey comedian. I don't want you to get hung up on that. Like it's not, Oh no, it's not like an over the top. I feel like. Sure. Well, I mean like Jim Carrey, Ben Stiller and Will Ferrell all do different flavors of comedy, right? Like I'm just saying they're all known for being comedic actors. Yeah. Even if they've done other types of roles, that's what they're known for. Yeah. Hmm. Early 2000s. I will say, kind of sort of somewhat of a blind spot here. Um, I mean, all those actors I've mentioned or have ruled out have all primarily been white actors. Um, is Dave Chappelle in this movie? No. Okay. <laughs> is Dave Chappelle in this movie? Yes. It's Robin Hood Times. <laughs> <laughs> That's early 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> no, but it could have been like Undercover Brother. Sure. Which, although Chris Kattan's SNL, so yeah. I guess that would have technically mm-hmm. been ruled out. But. What was the question about the known for their comp? Like, what? I'm still, I'm still kind of hung up on this one. And I think you'll understand why I'm hung up on it when we get there. But I, it's, I wouldn't want you to lean too heavily into focusing on that. Like, if it's I just feel like if it's, if it's a comedic movie worth bringing up it more likely than not stars an actor or actress who's known Known for for their comedy yeah yes being in comedy shows or movies or stand-up or whatever Mm -hmm. you know okay again that's why well that's why i brought up when you seem confused i brought up the because of anything like i said joe pesci is not most famous for comedy yeah but he's a star of a comedy i i don't want to give you too many hints but i will say that the majority of movies I can think of with this person are comedies, but they're dual genre movies. Okay. It's not just a straight up, like, I don't know, like, Wedding Crashers is a straight up comedy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these yeah, are. Yeah, if you want to get more specific, it's like a rom com, I guess. Or but that. But even so, like, leans heavily, like, it's a comedy movie. Like, yeah. I feel like this person, like, it's comedy and something else, usually. Okay. Like, some, some genre. There's some genre that is, like, it's a genre comedy, like for like a specific type of thing. Usually, that's okay. how. At least that's how I like when I think about this. This lead, that's what I'm. Okay. Most fun thing. Anyway, that's eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, I, I had already asked right if it was an action comedy, and you said no. You didn't. Um, I don't think. Did you? Um, I don't think you did. You didn't. I? You didn't specify any types of comedy yet. Well, I was certainly thinking about asking it. I thought I did <laughs> ask it. Are you sure I didn't? Yeah. Okay. Is it an action comedy? No. <laughs> no I, I, I asked that question and you said no. Really? Yes. Yeah, right, I'll take one back. <laughs> That's why I was I like really not remember. going. I don't, I don't remember that one. I, I could have swore I did because I was like specifically steering away from that genre. So huh. I was assuming that I asked that question. You did. I'm pretty sure I did. Start writing these down. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be really funny when Mike texts me like three weeks from now and goes, you didn't ask that. (laughs) (laughs) 
Played him like a fool. <laughs> well, I mean, either way, like I said, I was already avoiding that genre because I'm pretty sure that that answer was no. And I feel like either you're gaslighting me or I'm gaslighting you. And I don't know which one's which. <laughs> we're somehow we've gaslighted, gaslit each other. <laughs> either way, we're both on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, is this a a dramedy? No. <sighs> Fuck. Is Eddie Murphy in this? No. Uh, SNL. SNL. God damn it, I'm an idiot. Oh, <laughs> uh, because I was thinking more like the 90s and 2000s sure. guys, that's why. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Early 2000s. Well, this is kind of sort of maybe cheating slightly, but the way you're talking about it, it doesn't sound like it's an ensemble. It sounds like it's probably one or two type of leads movies. So it rules out something like Rat Race. Life is nothing, it's a nothing. <laughs> Life is nothing but the slap in your face. Huh. And I would also rule out, like, probably rule out, like, something like American Pie, like those movies. But look at you, look at you now. You're thinking, you're pulling on other, you're pulling on other movies that you didn't even consider before. Yeah. You're, you're, you're Still getting, not you're giving getting, me the answer. Really well. it's, it's giving me more no's. <laughs> It's not giving me an actual path to walk down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, at least it's it's jogging my memory to think of other things, I guess. Uh, Just try laughing and remember things that have made you do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an approach. I'm not saying it's a good one. <laughs> can, you br- can you bring your computer to the, to the movie case? Let me, <laughs> let me peruse the title, see if anything <laughs> sparks my interest. <laughs> I see a big picture of Mel Brooks, but I can't think of any specifically early 2000s Mel Brooks movies. Mm. 13 questions. <sighs> we, should, we, should, we should add a new element to this game. What? Like a, like a 30 second or like a 45 second like shot clock. And if you don't ask a question in that time frame, you burn one. Okay. Not now. Oh, yeah. I'm just thinking. I feel like it could make the game more interesting. I also feel like we'll probably end up winning more. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Um, I, I think this is also one of those situations where maybe I have to start deploying the Wordle strategy. It's too late at the night for mm. me to walk away for 20 minutes and come back. What, does the, the answer. title contain these three letters? <laughs> no, no. I keep, uh, the last couple of days, I told you, I've like just had a wall where I just didn't have a question to ask. Got up, did something else yeah. for 20, 30 minutes, like, namely my job, mm. and then came back and like within like, 90 seconds solved it. <laughs> um, I'm totally like drawing a blank on any other comedic actors in all that, that time. Mike Myers, SNL. <sighs> you know, Vince Vaughn's in a lot of the Apatow stuff, but not all of it, I guess. But he's also in a lot of stuff with Ben Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Wilson, same thing. There's an overlap with all the Apatow stuff. There's an overlap with the Stiller stuff. Is Jack Black in this movie? No. I hate you so much. <laughs> Not because the answer was no, but because it looked like you were going to say yes, and then you I said know, no. You got so my mean. hopes up there. It was just rude. That was fucked up. I was thinking maybe School of Rock for a minute. Ugh. Who is in this goddamn movie? <laughs> <laughs> is this any sort of like school related comedy whether it be like high school or college no fuck dude what what, what movie is this <laughs> that's 15 because then you have like all of like the road trip and euro trip and like it's not the american pies like i said but you know it could be like yeah, not another teen movie and all those sorts of things my personal favorite euro trip i've never actually seen that one uh could we watch that one together Sure. I love, I love it. We should watch that one together and then do an episode on it because it's just one of my favorites. I've seen Road Trip. I've never seen Euro Trip. You teach Japanese to a monkey in 48 hours. I just need the material. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of those random lines from a random movie that just sticks with me for some reason. Is Neil Patrick Harris in this movie? No. Oh, man, I was thinking like one of the Harold and Kumars. Oh, Fuck. Yeah, that would have been good. Although that's technically a school one, I guess. They're in, well, they're in college in the first one there. I I wouldn't have registered. I wouldn't have clocked. Yeah, it. that's a, which is kind of concerning. But regardless, it's not that I would have. So. I would have hemmed and hawed and said no. <laughs> Again, <laughs> like because it's not. They happen to be <laughs> what in college. <laughs> well, I mean, like it's 
they talk about it throughout the whole first movie. You know what I mean? Like they don't really talk about it in the second one, even though it technically takes place like a day later. They're not really, it's not, that one's not a school movie at all. Cause like they're not in the school at all. They don't talk about it at all. Even though it happens one day after the first one. I really don't remember the second movie at all. The first one ends with him finally asking out, was it Maria? What are you? Like on a date. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, I'm going to Europe to do some modeling yes, yes, job. Yes, yes, yes. And so they immediately buy plane tickets to follow her okay, to Amsterdam. Okay. And they get arrested and sent to Guantanamo Bay. That's right. Harold and Kumar escape Guantanamo Bay. That's what yes. it was called, right? Yes. Six. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like you're, you're twisting the knife. <sighs> oh, I just had another. <gasps> what you got? Something to ask about. And I totally forgot what it was now. Is this a movie we talk about a lot? Yes. Same thing as in my cousin's Vinny situation. I'm gonna be so mad when I don't get this answer right. <sighs> Wait, what do you? I, I'm, you know, I got like you didn't. I didn't give you my cousin Vinny. Right. No, I. Yeah, I know. I'm just. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean you came up right up to the end of it. No, sorry, I'm kind of conflating the my cousin Vinny and the um. What was the other one that uh that I didn't get that you were? Oh, the, Leon, the professional mm. one, like, where I just like dance around like the whole. Was, I'm kind of like merging those two experiences gotcha. together because those, those were back to back weeks. I, I think, think right? so. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> we talk about it a lot. <laughs> <sighs> I, I I feel <laughs> I feel so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this game will do that to you. I I've definitely there's been a number of times where I've just been like. Do I even watch movies? <laughs> There's been a bunch of movies too where I'm like, oh, maybe it's that. And I'm like, it falls just at like early on in this. I was like, maybe it's Office Space. And I was like, no, it's 1999. It's just outside the range. Like, <sighs> <laughs> I was really hoping it was Zoolander earlier, but Ben Stiller's not in it. And for us, you know, we, we talk about it. Like, it's not. How many, how many questions do I have? You have two and a guess. Okay, that's what I thought. Like, who the fuck am I missing for a major comedic ish person? Whatever. I swear to God, I've like gone through in some way, shape, or form every comedic actor in, in this in this time. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what movies actually. I don't know if any movies apply. I was going to ask about Kevin Smith, but I don't think any of his movies even came out in that time, other than Jay and Silent Bob, and that co-stars Will Ferrell. Yeah, because Chasing Amy was the late 90s. Dogma's like an ensemble movie, and I think that's even 99, isn't it? I think so. It is. Yeah. And it's got Chris Rock. Ooh. No, it's got Jack Black in it. Fuck! I was thinking uh, right there, I was just like, I thought I had a moment of revelation, and it was Saving Silverman, and that's got Jason. Oh, uh, Saving that's got, Silverman. It's got, it's got Jack Black in it. What a treat. I think there's something in the back of the... In the back of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've wasted too much time. I'm going to just concede. I have no idea. Really? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, go ahead. I want to reveal this to you in an interesting way. I feel like you would have gotten it if you went out there and gave 110%. You're an asshole. <laughs> I even thought about that movie earlier. Bedazzled? Are you serious? Yeah. I almost asked about Brendan Fraser, and I was like, <laughs> I don't really think of him as a comedic actor. Uh, you know, it's funny, and, that, and that's and again, which you know, now you now you understand why I was I was going back and forth. He is a comedic actor, but it's not that traditional comedy delivery that you get from somebody like a Jim Carrey or whatnot. Um, but <laughs> you know, it's funny. Is I thought that that movie is a comedy. It is a comedy, but it's I don't a fantasy really comedy. Think of him as a comedic actor. Yeah, because I think of him as the mummy. Like you know, like but I, even that, even that right. That's like an action. That, that's not with. That's comedy. not a comedy though. No, it's it's, not. it's it's an action movie that has comedy. Yeah. It's not an action comedy. Yeah, like, that's so that's why. And this I, is I mean, this is a fantasy that has comedy. That's a, it's a comedy. That's a comedy. Um, the problem is. He was in a bunch of comedic movies in the 90s. He was. I haven't really seen them, so I don't think of him. Yeah. Like, I know he was in them, but I haven't, like, they're yeah. not top of like mind my, for me. My introduction to him is Encino Man. Yeah, and I've never seen the comedy. movie. 
And he was in that other one, was it Blast from the Past, which I've seen parts of that, and that's a comedy. George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle, which I just try not to think of. <laughs> um, Dudley do right. I see. I aware of the name of the movie. I've known nothing about it. Mm-hmm. Like at least I know what it's seen on Man's about. You know what's like. funny is I actually thought we were get. I thought you were going to get to this one fast. I, I literally I, thought about I, Bedazzled a little while I ago. It. I thought like, oh, let's let's get a quick fun and games this week. <laughs> no, but the, because there's not really a good way for me to get to that. Mm-hmm. Because the role really hinges on him. Because Elizabeth Hurley doesn't well, have a ton of famous roles. I also thought you had and fucking it. like Toby Huss and Orlando Jones. Like, yeah. I thought you had it for a second when you were like, I did. It, it was it was a movie that came to mind more than once during the course of that, and I just I didn't have a good way to ask about yeah. it that was gonna like eliminate a swath of movies. It was mm-hmm. like that's a, a very specific question that like the yeah. only question <laughs> I can think of that would bring up the movie is a very specific one. It was felt like it was gonna be a total waste <laughs> of a question. <laughs> Oh man! But when you were like, "Oh, is like Leon the Professional?" or uh, what was the one I didn't get from the other week? I thought you were thinking of the Mummy. I I was certain that you would have made that connection and then been like, "Oh." <laughs> no, but part of the other thing was, was like he's not going to pick a movie that I was just talking about a bunch. Like that's, like, that's ago, part like, of the reason I did it too. Is that you <laughs> asshole? <laughs> Here I was thinking I was I I was thought I was giving you a nice easy ish easy ish one. We've talked about it a million times. We talked about it last week and this week. <laughs> I even thought at one point about asking, "Have we done it for the show?" Mm, mm. And I, I always feel like that's a waste of a question because there's a million movies and we've done almost 200 episodes. Yeah. It doesn't rule out enough question or, or like it either rules out too many things or not enough. Not enough, yeah. At that point maybe maybe towards the end when you're out of it. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I like said I had to, have to maybe, maybe, like, I should have just asked a bullshit question about Bedazzled because I, it did <laughs> cross my mind 10 minutes ago. <laughs> that's when I, and that's when I go uh let me check. <laughs> and I scroll through the movie the titles of our episodes to figure out what movies we've done because I I just can't remember. We probably should create an, a spreadsheet. Yeah, absolutely. We've done. absolutely. And all the beers corresponding with it so that, that we nice. just don't have redundancies there. Oh, we'll do it. We'll do it one day, one of these Some days. Way. Al, I think with that it is time for our flick of the week death on the nile released in 2022 rated pg-13 with a two hour and seven minute runtime your imdb synopsis while on vacation on the nile hercule perot must investigate the murder of a young heiress short and sweet yes short and sweet uh, what the, oh, I was supposed to remind you a while ago to do a tweet length review. Yeah, I just thought about that five seconds ago. Sweet. That because our break didn't take place in the conventional <laughs> spot, and also because you didn't re- you didn't remind me, I forgot to do the tweet length review. I think I've got one for both of us. Well, you, you want to do you one on the fly? Let's break the convention. You go first. Okay. Sir. With a pinch of mustache origin story, a dash <laughs> of Egyptian dry humping. And a big helping of batshit crazy. Death on the Nile, although predictable for a murder mystery, is well worth the ride due to some truly on-point performances. 7 out of 10. Okay. Mine's going to be kind of more just like a riff because I'm <laughs> not being able to think of how to write this succinctly in a sentence sure, or three. Sure. It's basically come out in bullet points. Baffling CGI. <laughs> just baffling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Entertaining characters and performances, a somehow more convoluted and yet less intricate plot, and something that I thought was a continuity slash editing error that actually gave away the whole plot (laughs) of the movie. And I hope you know what I'm talking about, because I caught it when it happened in real time, and I, I thought the movie was gaslighting me all along and then when it was revealed that that was it at the end and i was like okay yeah so i solved it then and i was just like that can't be what really happened because it was so bad do you know what i'm talking about i don't so let's but just... I, I also like before you get too far before we get too far into it i solved this one like before the murder happened well, me too. Okay. What, like what's five the, minutes. What? Like five minutes before. Oh no! Like long before. I feel like the whole thing was telegraphed. I mean, I certainly had my suspicions at the like uh, really egregiously aggressive foreshadowing when yeah. the two dance scenes happen. Like you sure. probably pretty much could have figured it out there too, mm-hmm. which I kind of already is like okay, there. That's weird. <laughs> um, I mean, it was foreshadowing. Yeah. Right. It was a clue that it's not that bad. It was just like 
it was both too on the nose and also too obscure at the same time, which is weird. Yeah. And we can talk about that more in, the, in a minute. But so in real time, what made the first one so good was you don't see the murder. Mm-hmm. You see the body and there's enough bits and pieces where you you suspect just about every single character. But then also each of them has enough of an alibi that throws it, it which is what makes it such a, a gripping yeah. tale. And then, of course, the ultimate twist that it's all of them, right? right. Like that's even more than Clue. It's incredible, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. Clue drew inspiration from that happening years and years later. In this one, the <laughs> well, I guess it wasn't even seeing the murder, so you can't even draw it one to one there. I was just saying you didn't see the murder. When <laughs> the fight comes to a head between, oh, I forget the names of the fucking characters, um, the Army Hammer character. Mm-hmm. Um, what's his name? I don't know. I'm trying to look at Simon. Up, Simon. Wait, when, Simon. When yeah. Simon. Yep. When Simon gets into the big argument with Jacqueline, mm-hmm. and she shoots him, mm-hmm. they zoom in on his shin. They they shoot and immediately zoom into him, and he grabs with his hand onto his shin, and he's got a handkerchief in his hand already. Mm. And unless he's a magician who does sleight of hand and pops handkerchiefs out of his cuff. There's no way that that could have happened. I was just like, that's either a really bad job of editing that shot Mm -hmm. or that's a fake shot. (laughs) But like it's you zoomed in. It wasn't like a background (laughs) detail. You zoomed in on him with his hand (laughs) going to grab the point of contact with an already bloody handkerchief in it. I was like, so either this is whole stage and the two of them are doing it, or this is the worst edited <laughs> slash like shot movie ever. <laughs> okay. So I, yeah, that I, it's funny. I, I didn't even, I didn't connect how I didn't think about how bad that was. All I thought was when he grabbed his leg, I was like, Oh, there's your missing red paint. Which I, okay. <laughs> I mean, which ultimately was what he put on the handkerchief. Like, you were correct. Yeah. But to me, it was so egregious where it's like, you're literally watching him reach with his hand to grab his shin and the handkerchief is already in his hand. That's, that's Already funny. red. That's funny. And it's like... Oh, man. What's going on there? Oh, my goodness. And thankfully, the first one had nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, this one... That's the thing. Like, it's still, it was still a really entertaining watch, even it, though... It's it's a much less good movie than the first one, uh-huh. but it is still an entertaining watch. Yeah, they, I think they all they all do a great job. Yes. I just think in the execution, it just... It, they fumbled a bit. Yeah. And, they, and, you know, they still had a lot of... I wouldn't say as, uniform, as uniformly as the first one, and I guess there was probably... I didn't do the math, but maybe one or two less characters overall in this. Yeah. But, um... And I don't know that they necessarily did a good job of balancing out the screen time of all of them. Definitely, either. I would say definitely not. Uh, yeah, because some people were just absent for a while, and it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> or some of them like become really important, and maybe they're the murderer, and it's like well, you've only had like ninety seconds of screen time, right? Before now. Yeah. Um. So I want to. So we're, we're watching. Put this movie on last night after American Idol. Oh, hang on a second. Did yeah. you did you give a grade? I did. Sorry, I did seven out of ten. Okay. I- I'd probably give it a six and a half, seven, something like that. Yeah, sure. that makes sense. So we, um, I was running out of time to watch this. And I wanted to watch it last night before we were doing our episode today. And um, so after after American Idol, <laughs> we put on <laughs> Death on the Nile, and uh, I'm Kim is Kim is watching it, and she puts her head down on my shoulder, and I was like, "Well, you're falling asleep any second now." Uh, so she falls asleep, and then like. Maybe like an hour into the movie, she like wakes up and starts to get ready for bed. And she's like, "So, who who died?" And I was like, "No, no one, no one's dead yet." Well, that's the other. And thing, then, right? like they they killed Johnny Depp. What twenty minutes into the, yeah. the first movie? <laughs> At this one, it, it's like almost two thirds of the way through. The and movie. then she goes to bed. And when she wake when we wake up in the morning, I was like, five people." Five people died. <laughs> and she was like, what? <laughs> but obviously uh, the murderer is Gal Gadot. Right. So. Gadot Gal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I was, but that was just quite, it was quite the twist for her <laughs> to find out. But it, that was, it, no, it definitely like, you know, it goes on for, for being excited about, I love a good mystery. Yeah. Um, lots of build up, lots of character development. Uh, maybe too much, which probably, 
aside from some of the other telegraphing, that that did, definitely didn't help. Well, I think it's a balancing issue, right? Because the first one is so well balanced, where every character, every major character gets their time in the, the sun, and even a couple of the secondary characters mm-hmm. gets a moment or two. In this, it's like four or five major characters get yeah. a lot of development, and then like two secondary characters get some development, and then there's a bunch of other people who are kind of just there and exposition some motive at us. Yeah. Yeah. I will say my theory. Like, oh, sorry, but the the guy who was like the quote unquote cousin, the, cousin the, yeah. with the trustee, that guy does not get any development. No. But we just get expositioned why it could be him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which, uh, yeah, that was definitely, that was definitely, in hindsight, that leads to you to understanding that it's not going to be him. Yeah, but major red herring. What I, so the build up because like it is a good goes, it is a good motive right it like, is yeah and i actually thought that as far as like the build up the movie goes i i was actually i thought that he was going to be involved but just indirectly and that i i my assumption was that uh was his name simon and and jacqueline i thought it was going to be them i thought this whole thing was like a scam from the beginning and i thought the cousin was going to be in on it in doctoring whatever documents in a will so that like they get the money and he'll get a kickback from them on some agreement, but there's no paper trail to him because he's smart. I thought that's how that was going to play out. Until- or even like, or even he could have been involved tangentially and then they off him because it seemed like an obvious character, but then it's to cover up everything and the money trail. He sure. gets killed. But once, once I saw his gun, I was like, Oh, he, it's not him. Although they made very specific when Boop gets m- murdered, that it's his gun, really same type of gun. Yeah. You see it. Yeah. That's and that's and when I right. saw it, I was like, they made too big of a point of him taking it out and showing it. They're not going to show you it right now that obviously it's it's not him. It's somebody else has his gun. Although they've done those sorts of things a million times, right? Where someone, oh, well, I, I left my jacket in my room because it was too hot out. Mm-hmm. And then I came back and the gun wasn't in the jacket. You know what I mean? Yeah. like They do that sort of thing too, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I just, it, it, I was like, okay, I'll just eliminate that piece of it. Maybe it's just that it's these two characters, and and sure enough, it was the two of them working together. I will say there, there was there was there was some contrivances in this with yeah the four shot twenty two that was shot three times, but then a bullet was replaced. Yeah, <laughs> and now we got a one plus two plus one plus yeah. one situation. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I, that that one hundred percent crossed my mind when he was like, and we replaced it with one bullet. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect crime this gun was shot twice but no it was actually shot three times but we fooled you into thinking it was shot twice because i put a bullet back in it and then i threw it over the side of the railing and it was wrapped up in the scarf with the fake handkerchief that had the blood on it it was like Wait, what <laughs> uh, uh, yeah oh my god but they there were a couple of the other things that they leaned too heavily into is like there was the whole thing about uh ja- jacqueline being uh she was like the lead in the school play until Gal Gadot's character uh, came about and they gave her the part over her. And like, and I was like, okay, so there's definitely some acting chops going on here that we have to consider. That was one piece. And then the constant, like everybody's in it for the money, except you. I'm like, even you. (laughs) Or, or if you want to lead you to the same conclusion, you go SAT question style. When all of this, all the answers point to the same thing. It's the one that doesn't point to it. Yeah. <laughs> like the multiple choice <laughs> yep, strategy. Yep. <laughs> oh, every single person's in it for the money and one person isn't. So it's you then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, the, 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 the first... also wait, sorry to say, if, if we're going to go to like motivation, yeah, yeah. playing up the relationship to your point in the beginning, we're introduced to Jacqueline and Simon with them basically enacting a soft core porno on the dance floor. Yeah. And the way that that scene is shot with like the way the music's playing, the lighting, and it's zoomed in super tight on them. And then we get the whole thing. Oh, please dance with my friend. And she does it. And there's going directly into the same level of that sort of like tempestuous. Basically, they're fucking on the dance floor, Mm -hmm. but with zero chemistry and zero of the accoutrement of how filmmaking is done to make it like connote that sort of thing. It looks very robotic. Yeah. That feels very intentional, mm-hmm. and in the moment, I actually didn't put much weight into it, but then later on, when he keeps going on so much how effusive, how in love he was, and how melodramatic him and Jacqueline were, it becomes obvious that 
for all of the lack of of emotion and chemistry there was in that dance scene where he supposedly falls head over heels with Gal Gadot, you have the inverse of the overly the top emotional melodramatic between him and Jacqueline as they're doing their own dance around all the other characters on yeah. the boat. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, I sorry, I just <laughs> that I I was like, this is this is risque. Like I don't yeah. know what that dance was like. I was like, what is well, going on? Especially for how often they cut away and then came back to it and were just it was still going on. Yeah. It, it went on nearly as long as what's her name mops the floor in the yeah. opening of Roma. Well, and then the thing that ended up taking up way too much of my mental capacity was like, okay, they know each other and they're engaged and they have this dance that they're doing. And then Army Hammer is now going to dance with Gal Gadot in the same way. I'm like, what? <laughs> How do you know the dance? <laughs> that was. <laughs> well, I've always wondered that in, in movies, and especially older movies, where like the dance scenes were more elaborate. It's not just like people grinding or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, well, you guys have never met before, and you're just going to start doing this like elegant ballroom dance. Right. <laughs> everyone, everyone just knows how to do a foxtrot or yeah. whatever. Like. <laughs> Not yeah. the, this movie specifically, but like any of those older movies, right, where there's like a big dance scene. It's like everyone just knows this. It's always been like the immersion breaking thing for me with musicals too, which I know you're supposed to suspend disbelief. I'm like, everyone just knows this song. Yeah. How? Yeah. <laughs> everyone just knows this dance. You know. What, everyone knows how to waltz. I, I, you know, what's just dawning on me now that they like they they got away with it, but they completely glossed over this fact that the cousin did try to kill them. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could. I just. It. I'm so sorry. I, I did it. It's like. Wait a minute. Like. I. I understand that there is. There is murder afoot, but we can also arrest him right now for attempted murder for multiple crimes yeah. for for robbing the trust and also attempted murder. And you don't get absolved of attempted murder just because someone else ultimately succeeds in killing that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which also technically. He like attempted to murder Simon too, and just because that person ended up dead too, again doesn't absolve you of attempted murder. <laughs> yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah, and if, okay. even it's if got, you want, it's got some holes. Even if those people died, and we're going to absolve him of attempted murder, how about reckless endangerment? Someone else could have gotten hit too. That's true. That's true. I. Uh, I, <laughs> I was not expecting this movie to start off with the mustache origin story. Dude, I was floored because they show that character and I was like, it's a weird choice of actor to be a young Poirot. And then they show a de-aged and de-mustached Kenneth Branagh. And I was like, no, you can't. First of all, there's no human being in the world who could grow that mustache. And now you're telling me there's two who know each other who could grow that exact mustache? (laughs) I have a mustache. Doesn't matter how long I, I grow it for. I'll never be able to do that. His mustache has layers. There's like, like an ogre. it's like wings, like, like an ogre, you said? Yes. Amazing. It's like wings Ogres on top have of wings. layers. <laughs> Not everybody like onions. <laughs> I don't like onions. Everybody loves buffet. buffet. <laughs> Everyone loves buffet. <laughs> I love Shrek. More on Shrek. Did you know that the woman who plays Gal Gadot's godmother is the fairy godmother from Shrek 2? <laughs> She could have played Godmothers. Uh, was it ne- oh, hey, who played her godmother? No, Annette Benning was uh. Book's mom, not her, the other one. Oh, okay. Well, what's her name? Jennifer Saunders. Let's see, the, I don't know what the deal is with the credits on this movie, but it's yeah, very it's hard to though. find people. I think it's based on first appearance. Which yeah, I don't don't do, do that. that. Yeah, especially when a movie that has a lot of extra. That's not an appropriate way to do credits. Um. It's yeah, okay. Good, good at playing. It's... Good at playing Godmothers. That's true. Yes. I okay. So there's one really important scene that I need to highlight, and okay. it, it all comes back to the mustache. <laughs> um. Well, for one, retconning his mustache because in the first movie he had zero trace of scarring on his face. Also, he doesn't have the scar on his cheek when he has the mustache. They they. Penciled in one little piece. One little piece. <laughs> one teeny piece on the edge of the thing. The, okay, so on the topic of the mustache, at some point, uh, Simon gives uh, Perot a glass of champagne. It makes him all woozy. Um, he goes to sleep. I don't know if you realized. I hope that you did. When he went to bed, he had an eye mask on. 
Did he? He did. Where was his mustache cover? It was his mustache cover. Okay, because in the first movie, he had a mustache mask. Okay, I don't remember him. I don't remember the mustache mask from the first movie, but it yes. was so clearly the shape and structure of his mustache, but he has it over his eyes as an eye mask. Is that supposed to be because he was drunk and drugged that yes. he accidentally puts it over his eye? Yeah, no, yep. in the first in the first one, when he goes to bed the night that Johnny Depp gets killed, he gets woken up and he takes the mask off oh, of his mustache. Oh, amazing. Amazing. That's cool. I I I forgot about that. But uh yeah. so that's the only that's the only scene you see it in. Okay. I'm and gonna... I'll always remember it because who the fuck has a mustache? Mask? And I for- a guy who has that mustache. I forgot about that, and in see, and in this scene, I was like, "That is not for his eyes." <laughs> I will literally <laughs> never forget about that because it's so absurd. <laughs> that mustache is amazing, though. It is. I would associate all of the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I love Sean Ralphie. Uh, Chekhov's gun, right? Is a thing. There's probably so many. In, right. Which one? Well, is a thing. Like, yes. Right. Oh, I think you meant like and it's a thing in this movie. <laughs> it, it, it is, except it, it, it turned out to be the red paint. But the gun in the woman's... Well, there's multiple. There's both, there is a literal gun that's a Chekhov's gun. There is the paint, which is a Chekhov's gun. Yeah. And then, well, there's... then there's the gun that's not, that's not called back. They show us a gun that doesn't get used. Oh, that what's her name? And I was like... Singer? Yeah. I was like, well, you got to, you, like, the rules say you have to use that. No, no, no. Hang on. She doesn't use it, but she does draw it in that final climax scene. Fair enough. Okay, I take it back. That's a good point. I think that's good. It is used. It's not fired, yes. but it's used. Yes. It's brandished. Yes. During what other a, things can you brandish? A knife. And? An eye. You can? Okay, so <laughs> you, you, ready for, you ready for a real, real tangent? Is this the wait? Hang on. Does this have to do with the eye that you put in the sack that is that you hide away from your Dungeons and Dragons game? Yes. <laughs> How do you remember that? Because it was so absurd. Did it finally click for you? The brandishing of the eye. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was my. That was honestly one of the very few things I remember. Slash, <laughs> like I will never forget. <laughs> From playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Can I brandish my eye? If you insist. <laughs> I brandish my eye. Okay, nothing happens. <laughs> That's so good. On back on to I'm, back, I'm so glad that you remembered that. <laughs> back onto this movie. I was gonna say that that bag that the eye was in was up someone's butt, though, wasn't it? That's correct, right. yes. I, I know I had told you the story before. I was 99% sure it was on the podcast. I didn't re- know if you re- remember that story. Or, sorry. Didn't I remember, I told- didn't remember that earlier today you mentioned you ate cactus. <laughs> yes, which I would think, again, something you would never forget because it's just like, like, who just says oh that? Right? It was not some, like, a super common thing to eat. But, no, if I had told the story, I would expect you to remember it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't expect you to be able to draw the context clues of brandishing an eye. That is the part I'm impressed by. <laughs> oh, all right, let, let's circle back to a few more characters real quick. Firstly, uh, Russell Brand doing a pretty good performance here. Yeah, I, that was a note that I had at the end of watching the movie because I watched it with. Well, I watched. My parents went to see this in the theaters like I don't know a month ago, mm. two months ago. Um, which is why, again, I couldn't believe it was already on HBO. And so I was watching it. Like I was home alone with the dogs. I was watching it Sunday afternoon. Parents came home when I was about halfway through. So I sat down towards the end of the movie with me to watch since they'd already seen it recently. And, uh, when it was done, I was like, I wouldn't really say I'm the biggest Russell Brand fan. And I don't know that he's necessarily a great actor other than just at playing Aldous Snow. Mm Mm-hmm. He was legitimately pretty good in this movie yeah. and like cast way against type. Like he plays a lordly doctor in this. Like this is just not the Russell Brand character. I was vaguely impressed with his performance. In yeah. This. I, I also liked that, that little storyline there of like, yeah, like I, he's a lord. And he's like, but he's like, that's just a title that I have by birth. Like I am a doctor. Like that yeah. is what I've earned. And the whole, like him, him leaving to go and, and do his duty elsewhere rather than go home. And, you know, he has, he can just live off the money and be fine and not do anything. But no, he's got like this like noble driven person. And Which also, to be fair, 
we talked about the whole thing with Jacqueline not being about the money. It wasn't about the money for him either. No. Considering what broke them up was the fact that he wanted to travel the world and minister to poor, sick refugees in Africa and yeah. India and stuff. And she's like, yeah, I'm not about living in a mud hut. Mm. Like, I get that he has a lot of money, but none of what he does is about the money. Yeah. He ain't getting paid a lot of money to go do that. He was he was the only one that wasn't about the money. Yeah. that's the, I think that's an interesting, uh, an interesting find in there. Then, Book. I was genuinely surprised to see him in this one again. I was mm. like, wait, how are they going to like contrive to work him into this? Also, the beginning and the the biggest highlight of the point of how terrible some of the CGI was in this movie, because yeah. it was an Running egregious... down the side of the pyramid? Yeah, that was an egregious green screen situation. All of it. The kite flying, yeah. the being on the pyramids, in front of the pyramids. Some of those shots, I'm just like, my guy, they did worse job. The, the, sorry, this is a worse job than they did 20 years ago in like Star Wars Episode 2, which was egregiously over green screened. I, speaking of green, I just want to point something out. Is that she, that uh, Annette Benning's character makes a comment that she made the character's coat and kite green because she was missing her red paint. Mm -hmm. False. The kite was green. Well, it was about the coat. Was it the coat? The coat wasn't red, though. The coat was pink. The coat was pink because there was blood on it. It wasn't a pink coat, was it? Yeah. It was a brownish coat. Well, I, what, during that scene, he's wearing, it's like a pink robe. Oh, is it? It's like, it's like a okay. silk or right. satin right. robe. How about it? I'm pretty sure it was pink. All right, fine. Fine. Which I'll you do need be. red to make pink, right? But um, it be. yeah, I mean, obviously that was meant to be a clue to his involvement in it mm -hmm. and to be his, the, the, the whole Chekhov's red paint as well. It was yeah. a double usage of that whole thing. What about, <laughs> what about Egret getting thrown in the propeller? In a, in, a, in a water wheel. What is that what thing about called? There's definitely a name for that thing. There is, right? I'm just drawing a blank on what it is. <laughs> what were you going to say? I'm going to look, try to see, like, I don't even know what to Google. So why did they cast a woman with a very aggressive Irish accent to voice someone with a French accent? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but don't be wrong, I like her, yeah. and I'm glad she's in the movie. She's a good, I, I think she's a pretty solid actress. You know, it's nice to see her have some roles after having a Great opportunity in, in Game of Thrones. Like she hasn't really, I haven't really seen. I've seen her in literally one other thing. It was like a terrible B, like sci-fi ish, horror ish movie. Um, what what did you find? A ship mill. Okay, that's not the word I would have thought I would have had kicking around in my brain. But yeah, I, I got nothing else. I think I probably would have just called it like a steam wheel, right? Because it's a steam engine, like boat, like wheel, whatever. It, it boat mill. Water powered, okay. powered floating factories. The old fashioned no. water wheel. No. All right, whatever. Water wheel. That that's probably water wheel. isn't that what I called that, it. I, I said, "What is that water wheel I called?" Said, <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you said ah, water yes, wheel or water boat wheel. wheel or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, she did fine. Um, passable enough French accent. I'm sure someone who speaks French would be like, "You're an idiot," but. Like, it was fine. Uh, I was just like, wh why <laughs> would you cast... French accent, Ron Howard voiceover. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm just... I don't object to her being in the movie in the slightest. Sure. I just... why She had such a thick... Yeah. Brogue. Why would you cast her to speak with another accent that isn't... Range? I don't know. I mean, good for her, because yeah. like I said, it was passable enough. Like Yeah, very, very little screen time. Well, the problem is, like, she has a couple of scenes, really just the one big scene with screen time. And then, like, she just isn't in the movie for, like, 20 minute stretches. And then an yeah. egregious death. Egregious death. Yeah. The, uh... I was shocked to find out it was her who was in that propeller. I was like, who the fuck is I, that? Yeah, I was like, who, where, like, isn't everybody in the other room? <laughs> like, <I> was... <laughs> that was, that was too much. Then the to, to go back to Arrested Development again when they like they, they pulled the body out and they showed who it was I was like her yeah <laughs> <laughs> when they go when they're like uh oh, you know the the throat was slit in one clean motion with a, definitely was a and like you know without finishing the sentence everybody's like <gasps> and they look at the scalp and Russell Brand is like oh come on like you I, I didn't do it <laughs> same same thing with what's his name when the gun is very clearly the forty four. The 45. <laughs> it's like, so it's not him, right? Like, see, yeah. the scalpel's missing. So it's not him, right? Yeah. Uh, also, though, again, he as, just seems like, so tired as, in that scene in a great way. Sure. Like, I, 
Like, it's not, like, can we just, we're wasting precious time because it's <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> I will go confine myself in my cabin just to show you how much it's not me. <laughs> that person dies always. That's true, too. Um, <laughs> but um, also, though, her dying was another yet another instance of just like screaming the fact that it was Simon because mm. she literally confesses. I'm going to protect you. Well, two, no, two things that. But also she confesses to literally just. Poirot and Simon. Yeah. And then she turns up dead. Yeah. And only the two of them. Poirot did it. (laughs) Only, yeah, well. (laughs) I will say, I was kind of curious where it was headed in that final scene where they lock everybody in the room and he's got the gun trained on them because he was definitely emotional. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is he going to shoot whoever actually did it? Like, I I thought it was going to be like a vengeance thing. That's the first time it really touched him specifically, the fact that Book died. Even though he was very upset with him, he certainly didn't want him to die. Right. Oh, um, that was and, such a... That, but that scene of betrayal was the taste of betrayal. It was. You fucking whore. Oh, you fucking whore. <laughs> I, I mean, I, Book, Book kind of kind of is a fucking whore. I, mean, yeah. I guess he had repented of his whorish ways because sure. he's looking to settle down with a nice girl. But uh, um, it's funny because not terribly long before that, I was like, oh... Be kind of cool if they do another movie and Book is just going to kind of be the only other character who's around all the time. And yeah. then he got shot in the throat. And I was like, oh, let's scratch that off. Unless quick. the next one's somehow in between. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a million Christie novels that were made into a million different movies with. I forget who played him. I know oh, I didn't, I didn't realize before. there were that many like. Um, oh, yeah. There's like a lot of them. Older ones. That's cool. Is it? Oh, it, was it always played by the same person? Yeah. Oh, cool. Now, like, some of those movies were theatrical releases, and then eventually uh, they became TV movies, but, like, there was a lot of them. And we have here, fictional character. I I, I know that. Uh, <laughs> why is this hard to find? I could probably look up Death on the Nile. Peter right? Ustinov. Okay. Peter, how do you spell that? U-S-T-I-N-O-V. All right, let's see. Let's get a, let's catch a glimpse of this warlock. And how many movies were there? Goodness. A lot. Cool. I kind of want to watch some of these. Yeah, I've never seen any of them. I just know that they exist. Oh, that's fun. Nice. Well, anyway, another one is in the works, it sounds like. So. Oh, is it? Or at least um, greenlit. Okay, I, I actually haven't looked into that at all yet. I just, after the movie was over, I just searched um, Death yeah. on the Nile sequel, and it said... The first thing that came up was that it's been, you know, greenlit with uh, Kenneth Branagh to return. Okay. Cool. I mean, I, I would definitely watch another one. But is like, he going to grow the mustache back, I guess? I don't know. I feel like you can't have Poirot without it. Right. The final scene, he's chopped it off. And no one recognizes him because of it. Yes. That was a interesting call and response to the beginning and end of the movie. Yeah. That was so sad. It was so what that that he's a good actor. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, he did all of those Shakespearean plays slash movies for, like, years before he anyone in, like, America knew who he was. Mm. I mean, let's not forget his uh, his other performances, too. Sure, no, I'm just saying, like, like he is a dramatic actor. Yeah, like, he's Loveless. done... <laughs> <laughs> yes, he... Americans, Americans were introduced to him as... Arliss Loveless and Doctor oh, Doctor Professor Gilderoy Lockhart, <laughs> two performances where he turns it to fucking twelve. Forget yes, yes, and who am I? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love that scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah, he's great. He, he uh, as I'll watch him more stuff for sure. Also, weirdly, he likes to play Russian villains too, like mm-hmm. in the Jack mm-hmm. Ryan movie mm-hmm. and in Tenet. Tenet. Like I don't. I just love that when he. When he re- like is speaking of his wife or, or his soon to be wife coming to meet him on the train, he can't get through the story. That was so real, like the way that he delivered that. I was like, "Holy crap!" Like you are giving something that this movie does not deserve. <laughs> well, it's easy for him to do that when he's a director, right? Mm. Sure. <laughs> like. Sure. If it was for someone else, it's like, man, why are you doing this? But it's for himself. So, yeah, go go do whatever you want, man. Go be as dramatic as you want. Yeah. 
But, go uh, flex those go flex those muscles a little bit because it's been a while since you've got to do it in an actual role that like deserved your prowess. Yeah. Go watch him be Hamlet, like the scene of like the to be or not to be from like the early mid nineties as a movie. I remember seeing the the scene. Hmm. He's good. He's a really fucking good actor. I will. I'll do that. What else you got on this one? Who do we miss? What was your impressions on Gal Gadot generally in this movie? Because we haven't really talked about it. Uh, I'm not even just talking about the quality of the performance, just not all the, the character, everything. No, there wasn't. I feel like that's the character that's going to be killed. Like, I honestly feel like they could have gotten to it faster. Like, I just, I don't really think that they, that she had much to do. Yeah, I mean, they, they did kind of reinforce and drive home over and over again some points. It's like, okay, no, I think we've kind of got the picture. Yeah. I thought she did. I didn't think the character was written super well. No, but like she's deployed super well. She's rich. She's paranoid for with cause. And that's really the depth that we get, but they keep harping on it over and over again. So I think there's a handful of scenes that we go back and forth. Like, is she just like a rich bitch or is she someone with a little more depth? Mm -hmm. Do we feel for her? Do we not care that she's dead or going to die? Ultimately, you're right. Like, I thought some of that was required for that balancing act to make you feel like, okay, listen, you're kind of necessarily don't like her at the beginning. And then you wonder. What sort of bias am I bringing to this situation? Mm -hmm. Because there might be more to this character than just she's a rich heiress, right? Mm -hmm. And the drama of, I think anyone, even whether or not you've been stalked, you can empathize with, okay, no matter how rich you are, unless you're a total complete piece of shit, which it doesn't seem like she actually is, I can empathize with how harrowing that would be. Mm -hmm. When you think you finally made it, you think you met the love of your life. You think you are going to be able to go and live the storybook life that you think you deserve. And this woman who you thought was your friend, who you know you wronged, but you don't think you wronged so much that she should just then act actively terrorize you. Mm -hmm. She's basically terrorizing her, right? Yep. Um, I, I, I did think that was all kind of compelling in theory and some of it worked, but ultimately they reiterated it too many times that and that's that's the thing right i i, I agree with that they she did the part well mm -hmm. that all of that broke through the first time they did it yes and and probably, when they started to do some of those things the second and third time it's like okay like yeah. I, we've we've already gotten this established you had a chance to like do the performance you did it adequately yeah and that and yeah that, that breakthrough definitely credit to her like yeah it, like i felt I felt the discomfort that she was feeling, right? Like, Absolutely. And, and, but again, the first time. The second yeah, time. No. The third time. The fourth, fifth, and sixth time as well. <laughs> Which, that's, that's more on script. Like, it doesn't really have a ton to do with her. Although, yeah. like, obviously it was less convincing each time. But, again, that, that's kind of more about your mileage with the character than it is about the performance but so much. You know what, though? That, and that's where I think there's a misstep is they could have they could have gotten to the murder faster and spent more time with the interrogation and the investigation. Because you know, I, I thought the investigation was pretty, pretty good, pretty interesting. Like it was interesting, know. but it, it was very fast. Well, I would say the interviewing stuff felt like it wasn't given as much mm -hmm. weight as it was in the first movie, where it's like that was some of the best scenes. Yeah, peeling back the layers of the characters, whether making the character tell you a story was fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whether or not you were getting to the motivation, peeling back the layers of the characters was really interesting, and mm -hmm. I didn't think they did that uniformly. There was a handful of characters they did in this one, but not across the board. Which again goes back to what we were saying earlier about you can almost weed out some of the characters from their motivations stuff because like, they weren't given enough time to be rich and compelling enough. Where it's like, okay, like I, I don't, this movie doesn't care about you, so I'm not going to. Yeah, you didn't do it. Yeah, because like I really like. I, I do think this movie suffered a little bit, and I'd be curious how the book or the original movie went with this. There, I did like some of what was going on with all the other storylines between Book and him falling in love, and um, Poirot that, kind of falling in love. That was a pretty but, good twist. The, yeah. the him being hired to investigate the girl that Book is in love with. It it was, but even that, like. For all of the way over the top and ham handed foreshadowing of other things, they didn't do a good enough job of tipping us off to that going on. Yep. That had a better twist and revelation than the, the actual murder did. Yeah. 
but, but it was given less time. No, there were no breadcrumbs breadcrumbs for it, though, I don't think. Other than just how shocking it would be to run into him in Egypt like that. Yeah. That's the only thing where it's like, that's just beyond belief. Mm-hmm. But he's so, he, he is so genuinely uh, shocked in that scene to see him that I feel like it, it throws you off too much. Sure, but like he's arranged with his desserts in a chair staring at this one I definitely pyramid. I definitely clocked that as being weird. Yeah. He was so very like, mad just, about the delicious cupcake being... Yeah, it's just so shocking that it couldn't be believable. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, it, I, I had, I definitely had fun with this. Um, there was, I feel like there was something else that just, that you just reminded me of that I wanted to bring up and I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, he was so disappointed in Boop and was resigned to the fact that he was going to have to have him arrested. Also, hang on a second. Well, no, you, you, you finish your point. Cause then there's something I want to say, but when all of this was said and done, he was going to give the cousin who he doesn't know at okay. all a slap on that, the wrist. That's what I was going to get at. Yeah. Like, what's his name? What the hell? Steals it. Only returns it because of the murder situation. So I get that. But returns But he it. does return it. Yeah. And, like, Poirot has to a moment of weak, like A moment of weakness was yes. going to be, like, he, they were going to just throw this man in jail. For ultimately, like if you can say, like, ultimately kind of like a good cause. Like, he's trying to go legit with the woman he loves and, like, yep. meet her halfway because he feels inadequate to her. Mm-hmm. Which I get is, like, a very selfish reasoning, but, like... Yeah. It's, it's not, not for him great. To- it's not... None, none of it's good, but ultimately, like, it's not... He... Nobody was really being harmed by him taking this thing, which, I mean, that doesn't make it right. But also, yeah. he didn't end up taking it. He came... He he came to the realization on his like I feel like he well maybe not on his own I guess maybe he thought he well, could no, get to, away with to, it to be fair though he took it before she was murdered no oh well sorry he was going to take it before he knew she was murdered and he takes it right no I feel didn't he go didn't did he, he only take it when she he found out she was dead yeah. I, I don't remember yeah I think so I know I, I know he took it in the scene in which he discovered she was murdered but I I couldn't remember I, if he was I can't remember going why he was there. It. He was there because Simon got shot. Oh, he was going to tell her. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, so he only took it because she was dead. Yeah, I guess so. So then, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, I, it's weird that he would give, I don't know if it's, if the way that was going all down. I, if, 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 if this is so, I think it's just poorly communicated on screen. I wonder if his regret and how he treated Book in his last moments forces empathy out of I, that's the only thing that i could take away from it yes where he tries to do better by giving the cousin a chance to make good mm-hmm. by realizing that book was trying to make good mm-hmm. yeah. I, that's the only explanation that makes sense to me because yeah. otherwise you i i 100 percent agree that it just doesn't make sense that he won't give the benefit of the doubt to his friend who tries to make right and will give it to this stranger who is who has done the worst thing mm-hmm. who was actively stealing from someone who he supposedly loved while she was alive. I will say he's also definitely caught up in like the passion aspect of it too. Of like, sure. this is my friend. I can't believe my friend would do this. Yeah. And, you know, the only thing, the only thing that he could fathom in that moment is to retreat into his logical, like by the book rules self. Well, you have to pay for these consequences. Like we have to pay the consequences for these actions. Like, and, and then like you said, like him dying, it it all that all makes sense. It's not given enough time or like attention to be like okay, that is what happened. It definitely felt a little bit. Instead, it felt jarring. Like I said, it, I don't think it's communicated well enough. Uh, this is just me yeah. trying to make Justify it make sense, it. and that's the yep. only thing that I can even. I, I agree. To. I agree uh, with that. Who else do we have? So the the singer and her manager they were that, great. Like I, that. Was where I was going to go next. Um, well, go ahead and say what you want to say because I have something else. So I, uh, I just, I really enjoy. I liked the storyline of of Boo. I can't remember what her name was, and I, and I, for the life of me, can't figure out the cast list on IMDb right now. I mean, it's, it was Letitia Wright who played her yeah. from Black Panther. Yeah. I, I don't remember the character's name now. Rosalie. Rosalie. So Boo and Rosalie. I loved. I loved them together. I actually thought that they had great chemistry. I, especially sh- considering they they. They play off the whole cold lack of 
interaction. Mm-hmm. And then when you find it, it's all a front and the like when you actually get to see them. Yeah. Kind of behind closed doors and says that like they can act like the way they want to act. It's like, oh, there. Yeah, that, that was kind of nice to see. And then together. and then it's kind of fun that the that Book and Rosalie are are in love and uh, his Book's friend slash father figure Perot is also falling a little bit for the uh, for Rosalie's like aunt slash mother figure <laughs> it, badly it was, just really awkward it's just so, it, it's so awkward but it's also so sweet for some reason yes. I loved it because he's he's so much distanced himself from those feelings and emotions and anything actively uh, right and like and in doing so has fostered this kind of relationship with his work that is that and that struggling moment when they're leaving the boat and he's like trying he to down. ask her and, and he can't do it. It was just totally shuts down. Yeah. That was, I was impressed. I just thought the whole thing was good. And I, I, the way that she looks at him, it's just like, it's so sweet. Like she wants him to ask her and like, she want like, but she knows that he has got to get over some stuff before it could work and realizes it's not going to happen in that moment. But they, they had really good chemistry for two characters that were like awkwardly tiptoeing around each other. Yeah, it felt kind of sort of like the, well, honestly, kind of even like to draw back to Clue for a different reason. When you like pair off different characters, mm-hmm. and you kind of get to the, okay, this this pairing was funny for this reason. That pairing was interesting for that reason. And you get to, okay, well, we just have two characters left over. Let's just throw them together. And like <laughs> at the surface, it looks like those would be those characters. Mm-hmm. Like why? And then to like see that a relationship fosters between them over the course of it in a way that ends up being compelling. Yeah, that was great. So the the only other point I had on them was, well, we were, while I was watching for part of it, my mom was in the other room. She's like, "Oh, who is the the, the woman who plays the singer? She looks familiar to me." And I looked up. I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I'm scrolling through, scrolling through. I don't think this is what she recognized her from." But I realized I recognized her from something. Not that I recognized her while watching her on screen because this was 25 years ago, but more. She was in Ace Ventura. Oh when my Nature Calls. god. She is the princess. I never in a million years would have guessed that that was her. That's yeah. crazy. Right? Yep. The Wachadi princess. Oh my goodness. That's... I, the... <laughs> Remember when they're sitting on the log and they're blowing spitballs at the guy that is balancing on the totem pole? Yeah, who has to do it for like 48 straight hours or whatever? Yes. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> but with my help, with my he help. could be the best. <laughs> Also love when they're they're around like the, the having like the feast around the fire and he's just talking to her while he's playing with like the zucchini things on his fingers yes. <laughs> and he's eating out of the guano bowl the fruit base guano bowls collect the whole set <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, that great white bat makes great white guano. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Coming back to bats, full circle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That I would have never. I I recognized her, but would have never clocked that. Yeah, I took me that's digging amazing. through IMDb to figure out what my mom could possibly what know her you, from. That's insane. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> right. I'm 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 thrown now. The other weird thing was I I thought the girl who played Jacqueline seemed familiar, and I definitely don't know her from anything. The only thing. I could think of was I was you know kind of half watching when she first had her first speaking line because I didn't know she was going to be one of the major characters at first. I th- th- the whole dance scene was more going to be about something big was going to happen in the club while Poirot was watching, uh-huh. and then ultimately like when Gal Gadot comes to her and it's like oh okay no so she's a part of the thing, and she starts speaking. But I was looking down at my phone. I was like that sounds like Emma Watson. Huh. It, it's not her. No. She doesn't look anything like Definitely her, but not. she sounded like her. <laughs> That's fine. I have no idea what she's from, though. I, I didn't recognize her. Uh, she's in the TV series Sex Education. Maybe. Yeah, I think my TV, sister maybe rec- watched It's constantly. That. I feel like that, that Netflix trailer always tr- plays, like, if I'm flipping through stuff. I think. I haven't really watched much on Netflix mm. in a while, but my sister watched that show, so maybe I kind of sort of caught her while she was watching it. Could but, be. Um, yeah, I didn't. I, I I mean I know the name of the show, but I don't know her from that. Um, but you know, it was just a weird phenomenon. I was like, oh, that sounds like Emma Watson, but it's it's definitely not her. Mm-hmm. Um, 
The other thing is, is this the, is this the last thing we see Army Hammer in? I don't know. What's the deal with him again? Does he eat people? Maybe. Maybe. He maybe. Undetermined. Was it just like a like an overblown like thing? It's it's possible. Okay. I just think we're never going to hear about him again. Mm. But it's I mean, disappear. That was a while ago that that happened, right? And the, well, I guess this movie was probably d- been done for like a year and a half or something like that. Yeah, I think they had right. already finished shooting this. Before Let me that see. Story Let me see out. if I could find him and see if there's anything coming up with him in it. I mean, he might be in something that like four people will watch, but I don't think he's going to get a major role again. Oh, he actually doesn't have anything. Yeah, that's not surprising. Listed. Weird. Weird. It's a shame. He was good as Ord. As who? Ord. Ord? In in Free Fire. Oh, that was his name? I don't I, I don't remember anybody's I'll, name. I'll never forget it. Who, who's named Ord? <laughs> that guy. Oh man. What uh did we, oh, we didn't touch on the godmother much, but I actually thought that storyline was really sweet. The idea like I liked that whole concept of like, yeah, we have like we had money and we took care of everyone and we mm-hmm. were swindled out of it. And they all lost their jobs, and some of them never worked again. Like that whole thing was. Was it we, or was it just her partner? Wait, the godmother's nurse. Yes. The nurse and her husband. Yes. Had money. Okay. They came from money. They had an estate. It sounded like where they. So took the way care you of- said it, you said the way you said it, it sounded like. The godmother and the nurse. Oh no! Together no, no. The nurse, the nurse, and like, her husband. No. I think it was her husband. They had money. They bo- uh, obviously the godmother has money too, but a different yes. side, and like that. But they found each other, and like this, just under the circumstance, and like that. I just thought like the the uh, the reveal of that story was like kind of dark but sweet. Like just like it, it's throwaway. It really doesn't have any impact on anything else going on except for an alibi of a reason why she acted a certain way. But mm-hmm. like. To have that little extra bit of nuance written into the character, like to develop a character that you're not actually going to spend any time with, yeah. I thought it was an interesting choice. Like yeah. they could have just, she could have just been there and it would have, you probably wouldn't have questioned it, but instead they give you something it's like they give you a building block for that character. And yeah. I, I thought it was a little abrupt, but ultimately it was an interesting like just like and how and why it came out, mm-hmm. but like yeah, I ultimately thought it was an interesting enough storyline. Yeah, I also loved. And now you're accusing me of murder, and then Boot goes, he accuses everybody of murder. It's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that line. But. I do. I I do think they they played up the slapstick with Poirot a little bit more yeah. in this, which was kind of surprising it's not necessarily inherently a good or bad thing i think for some scenes it definitely worked and some scenes i kind of felt like it cheapened him a little bit yeah i can see that for sure cool you have any other notes on this one no i think we we kind of tackled all the the good stuff sweet i'm looking forward to another one whenever that may be yeah i don't did you see which one it will be no it didn't say okay it's probably just uh this is working do another one well, I don't know how chronological the stories were mm. in the book form or in the original movies, uh, so I don't know if they can if they can move around and pick and choose which one they think will be the strongest one. Because the only two off the top of my head I could tell you was this one on the previous Murder on the Orient yeah. Express and and Same. Death on the Nile. I know that there's like I said a bunch more of them. I I I might recognize a name or two if I read the titles, but I off the top of my head I could not give you another one of them. So. I don't know which. At the end of the day, even if these movies were bad, it will have all been worth it for the Josh Gad, Daisy Ridley trying to get Star Wars (laughs) information out with James (laughs) Judi Dench. It was so good. It was. Uh, was. Well, that's all for this week's episode of Flicks in the Six. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have a movie for us to review or nuggets for us to discuss, you can send those requests to Flicks in the Six at thespintune.com. Tune in next week for more movie and beer goodness. Until then. I'm Anthony Costanzo. I'm Al Bielsi. Thanks for coming out. Yeah.